Good evening and welcome to the Board of Selectmen meeting for Monday, August 17, 2015. Um, I'm going to ask to start with a moment of silence since our last meeting, the terrible loss of young Catherine Malatesta. She was a student council president, CCD instructor. She led the musical. Um, so a moment of silence, may God have mercy on her soul and help her family and all of her friends through this terrible time. So as always, we start with the consent agenda. First, we have the minutes of the meeting for July 13, 2015. We have a reappointment to the Zoning Board of Appeals, Suzanne Rivet Spinney, a one day request for a one day beer and wine license for the second annual Moonlight Beach Party at the Arlington Reservoir. Uh, Joe Connolly and Jennifer Rothenberg for approval of the Arlington Center for the Arts 16th annual open studios. The Arts Center to be open on Sunday, October 18th from 12 to 5, and asking for a waiver of resident-only parking restrictions on Tufts and Foster Streets for Saturday, October 17th, and Sunday, October 18th, Pamela Shanley, Arlington Open Studio Director. And for approval, Arlington Center for the Arts, Open Studios Banners, uh, Linda Shoemaker, Arlington Center for the Arts Executive Director. Is anybody here wishing to speak? or give commercials on any of those items, please. Hi. Hi. Uh, so I'm Linda Schumacher. I'm the executive director of the Arlington Center for the Arts. Yes, Linda. And thank you for hearing our uh, request for the banners and for the waivers. Um, as you may know, Arlington Open Studios, this is our 16th year, is a real uh, weekend-long showcase for Arlington's local artists, performers, craftspeople, and a real opportunity for us to showcase the creative people in our midst. So we're always grateful for the town support on that. And this year in particular with the banners, I hope that the, the Board of Selectmen understands what a boon this is for our cultural organizations. To have that opportunity as people pass through the center of town to see uh, the cultural vibrancy of our town and some of these anchor signature annual events in Arlington. So um, such as the Arlington International Film Festival and uh, the Arlington Live Arts Block Party. We would be really happy to have Arlington Open Studios uh, join those anchor signature events. and. Uh, so, and I hope you'll be able to join us for the, op the Open Studios weekend itself. It's October 17th and 18th uh, from noon to 5 at the Arlington Center for the Arts. Thank you. Thank you very much, Linda. Good oh, job. Uh, Linda. Yeah, sorry, Dan. Uh, if Dan. someone wanted to learn more, where would they go? They could go to our website, acarts.org, or give a call to the office. I'd be delighted to talk with anybody at any time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Anybody else? Move approval. Second. Second. Further discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Uh, next, we have a hearing in Eversource pr uh, Petition, Massachusetts Avenue. Uh, Rich, this doesn't look like Richard. No. Jackie. <laughs> How are you? Good to see you. We'd like to install 480 feet of conduit and one manhole on Massachusetts Avenue, and it's to improve the electric reliability in the area. Second. Second. Uh, are there any abutters here who wish to speak on this matter? Oh, Mr. Dunn. Can you just tell me a little bit more about what, what, it's, what the conduit is there for? Just because, I mean, it's obviously, a, a, you know, it's part, there's no new development going on around no, there. No, it's just, like it's 4KV and we're going to 13.8. Okay. It's for the reliability over that. We're having a lot of outages. All right. Every time the power goes out, all the town's phones go out, too. Oh. Yeah, we know. <laughs> the yeah. reliability, is, yeah, the whole town gets an email that says, we lost power at the high school, and so therefore, so I'm really glad to hear that. That's a good, good answer. Thank you. Okay. Yes, Ms. Mann. I want to assume, since Ms. Duffy's at the uh, microphone, that you are also now with Eversource. So you'll, I am. You'll continue to be our contact person because you've I been am. fabulous in the past. In so. the storms, that's right. <laughs> yes, thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So how often would you say Ms. Mahan would we, we'll be calling you in the future? You want to take a shot Quite at that? Quite often. <laughs> 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 um, is there a motion? So moved. And second? Second. Further discussion? Again, any abutters here? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed. Thank you. Thank you very much. See you again.
uh, for appointments. Um, so the first is to the Permanent Town Building Committee, and this is an appointment with myself as uh, chairman, with Mr. Tosti as chair of the Finance Committee, and with, with Mr. Schlichtman as chair of the School Committee. And we interviewed uh, three candidates for this position, and we're recommending to you Chief uh, Robert Jefferson uh, for the permanent appointment to the Town Building Committee, who has already served on that committee through the three uh, firehouses that have been rebuilt or re rehabilitated. Um, and every one of those was done on time and under budget. Uh, and no one could have been recommended more than Mr. Jefferson was. So could I please have a motion on that? So moved. Second. Second. Is there a discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 So this is a one-year appointment, and uh, so it will expire in 2016, but at that time we're certainly going to, uh, uh, well, whoever's chair will go through the same process. Um, but uh, also the three of us, Mr. Tosti Schlichtman and myself, were very impressed with another gentleman we interviewed by the name of Mr. Brett Lambert. And so much so that uh, Robert Jefferson had served uh, Superintendent Kathleen Bodie. She has uh, an appointment of her designee. And what she has done in the past is if it's a school building project, she appoints uh, Diane Johnson. And if it was a town building um, uh, project, she appointed Robert Jefferson. So uh, what we've done as a committee, we, we have communicated with uh, Superintendent Bodie that uh, we'd ask her to replace uh, Robert Jefferson for the town projects with Brett Lambert. Uh, and that's not official yet until we hear back from uh, Superintendent Bodie. So uh, next is uh, appointments of the Council on Aging, uh, Ann Fitzgerald and Jill Greenlee. Please come forward. Thank you both very much for your interest. You want to, would you just tell us a little bit about yourself and your interest in the Council on Aging? Go ahead. Uh, my name is Jill Greenlee. I uh, moved to Arlington three and a half years ago from Cambridge. Um, I just thought it was time to get involved in the city, and I used to work on aging policy in Washington, D.C., so that's no longer what I do, but it's uh, a love of mine, so I wanted to get involved. I'm Ann Fitzgerald. This will be my third term, and um, I've always been an, an advocate for seniors, and I'm an advocate for getting the building rehabbed and looking forward to a new board and uh, lots of work that we have ahead of us. I just wanted to give a shout out to Art Bugnick, who retired as the uh, Friends of Arlington COA president and um, he has done a wonderful job. They've given thousands of dollars to the Council on Aging. And don't forget the race the 27th of September. Questions on the board or motions? I move approval of both uh, appointments. Move approval. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Um, Jill, I just want you to know my name is more pronounced Greenly than it is Greeley. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't know why, but uh, so I'm absolutely voting for you. <laughs> <laughs> as I always would Anne as well. And thank you both for your willingness to serve and your service to this community. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. aye all those opposed. Thank you. Thank you. And then we have appointments of the Vision 2020 Standing Committee. So first we have Mary Harrison, and then we have someone who's pretty familiar with the chamber here, Annie LaCourt. So a uh, young lady there, Ms. LaCourt, why are you interested in the Vision 2020 Standing Committee? Uh, because I'm obsessed with citizen engagement, <laughs> and I would like to see the town's robust resources in this area um, well-connected and um, publicly visible. Thank you. Mary? Why am I interested? Um, I have been on standing committee for a number of years, but we are going in new directions at a rapid pace, and I find that very exciting. 
Um, so being on board for another year will give me a chance to watch how the new group begins and launches into Vision 21. Thank you. So on those two, is there a motion? I know Julie's standing there. Don't worry, I have a big thing for her. <laughs> uh, so can I have a motion on Annie and Mary? So moved. So moved. Is second. there a second? Second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. And now to the Vision 2020 Standing Committee, but to appoint her as chairman of the Vision 2020 Standing Committee, Julie Brazil. Hi. Hi, Julie. Not enough to do, huh? No, no. <laughs> I, increasing levels of insanity. Yeah. Uh, what do you think we should be aware of here? So, um, sure, my vision for Vision 2020. Um, I like what Annie said about being obsessed with citizen engagement, um, and she's right. I think that um, Vision 2020 is an interesting thing. It's an idea, and then we've turned it into a collection of committees, superintendent and town manager, manager and town council and town moderator. The point of all of that is so that when we engage the citizens, um, th there's a, a structure. Um, and that's really the whole idea. And the Standing Committee's job is to make that structure work so that we're including as many people, um, exchanging as many ideas across all of the levels, people with ideas who write little sticky notes on the survey, people who come to meetings, people who bring ideas to you, pull it all together so that we're taking the best advantage of it. So that's really my vision to, um, to try and put more structure to that collaborative part. Thank you. Yes, Ms. Mann. Uh, first move approval, and then um, just sort of as a piggyback into that, mm -hmm. and, and I know um, Mary has been extremely instrumental um, in this facet that uh, in terms of citizen involvement, one of the things I just put towards you since you're the chair or co-chair um, is maybe A, working on a more stronger collaboration around town meeting town meeting members and precinct meetings mm -hmm. before town meeting. Absolutely. To, to get people introduced with the process. I know for um, precincts 8, 10, 12, 14 with Mary, um, we've availed her uh, when she's offered and we've kind of abused that. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing that I would um, put forth um, to you is uh, I know we have a student government day and mm -hmm. that gets a cadre of students that really gets involved. But I can just say in my limited uh, ownership where I work with the kids at the high school and the middle school, um, perhaps maybe Vision 2020. My thing is a lot of times we hear, gee, we don't, we're not getting the younger kids, you know, really involved and educated sure. besides student government day. So mm -hmm. whatever tie-ins and a lot of that probably has to do with the clubs. And so I just wanted to yeah. put those two, the, the town meeting and the, and the kids sort of before you in terms of if you gave me a chance to come in under new business. Oh, absolutely. Um, uh, yeah, so we actually do have a space on the advisory board okay. for um, a student, and um, it would be great to identify um, some candidates and find, um, find somebody who really wanted to jump in. The advisory board meets just a few times a year, so it's really not a big burden, but it's a chance to, to make those connections, and I think that's a great idea. We should really work on that. I agree. And or maybe have it sort of a rotating position, that it's the... Sure, You we get can do maybe it. one meeting, it's the... Um, student council representative, with, mm -hmm. whether it's the president, whomever. Another meeting, it's, you know, maybe somebody from drama music, from sure. sports groups, or... We, um, could, we could do that partly connected to the advisory board meetings will largely be themed by focusing on specific task groups, and so that would provide some structure for recruiting kids with energy in those areas. Sure, that's a good idea. Thank you for having extra time to do this. Sure. Mr. Byrne. <coughs> Excuse me. Thank yes. you uh, very much, Mr. Greeley. I, um, I just want to say um, I'm excited about these appointments right now. And uh, leading up to town meeting, there were you know quite a few discussions about Vision 2020 and how Mary pointed out a, a new direction for it, and one that really I think will build off all the work that's been done in the past. And I know um, that Julie is the right person to lead this, and um, particularly with how excited she is for it, and I'm um, really looking forward to the work that Vision 2020 accomplishes uh, moving forward in a, a lot of important aspects of uh, town government here. So, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Kiro. 
Uh, thank you. I, I don't want to repeat too much of what uh, Steve and Diane said, but um, I, I also appreciate the, the reappointments and the new appointment with the familiar face um, to Vision 2020. Um, I want to applaud you in particular, Julie, for reaching out so much before town meeting to really try to restructure Vision 2020 so that it's a more um, efficient um, structure and really seeking out the, the input of um, some of the people who were written into the original bylaw and um, and and really pushing pushing that through and trying to um, think about how vision 2020 can adjust to the new um, you know challenges that the town faces so so thank you and we're glad that you're re-upped and that that uh, <laughs> it's good folks in the seats yes my question is actually for Annie been here since we've been using this? No, I haven't, but I love it. it no more great. paper, isn't that nice? <laughs> uh, I'm delighted. Thank you all. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Being old, and <laughs> the only person here, I think, who was on the original, uh, it's stunning to me how, is it 25 years? Would you know? Depends on exactly? when you started counting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure. But, but we, there was as big an effort in terms of community meetings, a uh, uh, lot of involvement of people in this, and thinking at the time of how far away the year 2020 was, because we, we kind of argued over that name. We wanted the concept of 2020 vision, right? Clear vision. Mm -hmm. uh, but also the year. And uh, it's quite a testament to people like yourselves who have kept it going all these years, and thank you for that. So we have a motion by Mr. Mahan, mm -hmm. seconded by Mr. Kiro. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you. And now final appointments, I think. The Zoning Board of Appeals uh, and uh, uh, why anybody would want to be on the Zoning Board of Appeals with what's up in the future possibly ahead of us. But uh, in speaking with Pam, um, we, Diane uh, was busy, so it ended up that Maria and I did interviews with uh, three candidates and were highly impressed with two of them. Let me ask them to come up, Mr. Moen and Mr. Quinn, if you both would come up. Um, so, uh, Mr. Mullen, first, um, uh, I was very impressed when I asked you about why this, and you've been to a few of these uh, zoning board meetings, correct? I actually have not, no. Well, then again, I was not as impressed with that part of his background and his resume. But uh, why, you mentioned why you were interested in this particular board. Well, well yeah, I, I really want to help out in the community. Um, I think civic engagement is really important. and. As an attorney that has done done some work in this area, I think this is a uh, That's what it was, yeah. a unique way for me to get involved. Yeah, you actually did a special permit. Right? Yeah, I did a special yeah. permit um, out in a town in western Massachusetts. So, right. okay. yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Quinn. We're running out of things to appoint you to, but uh, <laughs> we're certainly glad to do so. In your interest, sir. Uh, I'm just trying to keep the vision of Arlington going to the master plan and. Keeping the integrity of Arlington. I mean, it's my adopted town, and I love the town. So I'm just trying to get as involved as I can. Thank you. Questions from the board? Comments? Mr. Dunn. Uh, thank you both very much for serving. And uh, I will say that one of the things, you know, looking forward as possible, the um, special, the 40B application that we've got pending, whether it's going to be this 40B or some other 40B in the future, the role of the ZBA and the importance of the ZBA getting it right, and I mean this not just in terms of the ultimate decision, but in terms of the process such that it hold, like whatever the right decision is also holds up in the courts is just so important. Um, and uh, I'm really glad to see expertise going in there to, that will help us m uh, make not just good decisions, but make those good decisions stick, because you have to do both of those things for the ZBA to be successful. So thank you, both. Yes, Ms. Mahan. And, and just to sort of piggyback on that, I, I'm sure you guys go in with wide, eyes wide open in terms of uh, the many different issues, um, not just 40B, that, that will come before you. And I definitely appreciate that, you know, we have someone with, le both of you with legal experiences sort of in different venues, attorney and, and, and insurance industry as well as um, business. 
Um, and I would say uh, through our town manager and town council, um, whatever resources that this board can be to you all in any current anticipated endeavors as well as any future endeavors, but also I and my colleagues are going to be very respectful of the fact that you all, as well as your colleagues, our colleagues on the Zoning Board of Appeals, our Zoning Board of Appeals members, and are going to have to carry that sort of mantra on your backs right now. Um, so I, I definitely do appreciate that, and I definitely appreciate the expertise that you both bring to this. Um, I don't know, I'm not going to put you either on the spot, um, if, you, if there's anything that so moves you, um, but uh, I just want to make sure that um, going forward in the future, when I first came on the board, the Zoning Board of Appeals was sort of a nebulous um, board that I wasn't quite sure of, appeared before once, and we won't go into that because that'll be, <laughs> Mr. Quinn kind of has heard some of that, but um, w whatever, um, overtures or any terms where we can interface would be appreciated, but also the fact that um, I do appreciate you are zoning board members and have a lot before you that is currently on your plate. <coughs> God bless you. And, and, and we anticipate will come in the future. So I just want to kind of extend that extra resource helping hand through the town manager and town council when applicable. Thank you. Mr. Byrne. Um, thank you, Mr. Gailey. I, um I just, of course, want to thank the both of you for um, your willingness to do this. And I, I think it's really a testament to your commitment to the town when, you know, there are, are essentially, you know, interviews for associate positions to what is a really important committee. And I, uh, I think, uh, as we all know, it's kind of all hands on deck right now. And um, certainly look forward to uh, the work that you do. And I, I'm just really grateful that uh, you're willing to play a role in this. So thank you. Mr. Kuro. Thank you. I also thank you uh, very much. And I think, as Ms. Mahan said, a lot of times people do think of the ZBA as being kind of over here. And when you have a problem, you go there and you and when you want to appeal um, a decision. But I, I appreciate Mr. Quinn's reference of the master plan. I know that the chair, Ms. Heidel, was on the master plan advisory committee. The ZBA was right there playing a proactive role also in trying to help guide the um, the, the town through this process. And um, so I, I thank you for, for appreciating that and, and, and that role, and I think um, it'll be a benefit to the work going forward. No. Uh, was there a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Second. And, um, you know, I, I did speak with Pam a few times through this process, and she was very, very helpful. And she emphasized that associate members are often used when a regular member uh, is unable to uh, be at a meeting, the associate member automatically moves in and has full voting powers and, and the rest. And she also mentioned that, you know, whatever the permit, ap ap whether it's a variance, a special permit, or a comprehensive permit, um, that in order for a member to vote, they would have to have watched or read the minutes of previous meetings so that they are constantly kept updated. So it's. Uh, it's, it's a committee that uh, requires intelligence and dedication, and we have two gentlemen here who have both. Thank you very much. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Best of luck. Thanks. Thank you. See you again. Uh, and to be clear, so Mr. Moen is appointed for the one year, Mr. Quinn for two, but that would be a reappointment next year is all. Thank you very much. Take care. Thank you. So we have a request for a sidewalk cafe permit and alteration of premises. Uh, and I, I, I must say that uh, the ones that we have granted so far seem to be working, although I don't know what the rest have heard. But um, Angelo D. Girolamo. G. Girolamo. Hello. How are you, sir? How right, are how things are you? at Olivio's? Very good. Very good. So we, we have uh, plans in front of us. Um, are these the plans you were referencing earlier, Mr. Correct. Okay. So uh, these are not quite architectural plans, am I correct? Is that? Correct. Okay. But you will have those done before actually? Yes. Right? Uh, so questions, comments on the board? 
Yes, so Mr. Dunn first, then uh, Mr. Caro. I, I got to move Mr. approval subject to conditions. Yep. Uh, I'm very excited. That was a good motion. <laughs> uh, I, was very, I, I was very excited to see this plan. I think it's part of the Mass Ave rebuild and some of the benefits that we're going to get out of it once uh, it's available. And I think that's a perfect location for this type of thing. I think that there's this, when I look at the diagram, you know, I, as, as it's drawn at this point that you know there's this four foot wide pedestrian walkway that goes in a straight line from end to end without obstruction and then other than that I get to eat instead of sitting out in the street and I think that's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you Mr. Kuro. Um, thank you very much. I, I just wanted to, um, I, I'm also very supportive of, of the application. I, I think um, maybe the planning department had discussed with you a few alterations to yes, the application. Did, yes. Um, and I, th I suspect that's what Mr. Dunn was referencing with the as all conditions. As I was not specifically, but I mean, it certainly was, yeah, it would be included. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> just just a few alterations to make sure that I'm access access is ensured. It's always important um, in these. And I would also note that on our desk this evening there was um, uh, <clears throat> an email uh, to us um, from uh, one of the uh, your neighbors. And a, and a butter to the restaurant in support of the application as well. Um, a Jason Korb, um, managing member of Maggie Ash LLC, which I guess owns 13 Winter Street, uh, wrote in support as well. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Byrne. Um, thank you very much. I actually, I, I know no one from the planning department's here, but I did have a question about the conditions as set forth. Um, I know in um, Mr. Field's comments, it states that the, app, uh, the, that the application um, requests uh, 420 square feet, but the drawing um, is 476 square feet. And, and I was wondering that instead of, um, you know, bringing down and going through uh, new drawings from the 476 to 420, if there, because there seemed to be the space for it as set forth, if we could just change the applicant's request from you know and increase it to that 476 so we don't have to you know go through the issue of going through all the drawings if it, if it fits and there's a space there it seems like that might be a, a pretty good way forward yeah, yeah it's just a, I, I think it's a what, you, what, what would I'm, I'm sorry what are you asking to do so, sorry. so mr. Uh, fields from the planning department mm, right um, wants says that the application um, you know states that they would like 420 square feet, right. but I guess the drawing is actually for 476 square feet. Oh, I see. It was and and, and I think that it might, it could, if it's possible, it could be easier to, um, you know, just amend the application to the 476 as opposed to going through the process of getting new drawings to scale it back down. Mr. Yeah. Mr. Sorry. Chairman, thank you. Uh, so, Mr. Fields uh, also mentions in his, in his recommendations that the drawings, as they are tonight, aren't necessarily drawn to scale. So I'm not sure that there are those extra 56 square feet to okay. be able uh, to have the board approve. I, I myself, no, no uh, plan reading expert looking at these plans, I, I have uh, concerns that the physical space that's laid out is not the actual physical space okay. available. So I, I think p perhaps, yeah. you know, making sure that we get those drawings done. Uh, you know, certainly great, great concept. I think it's going to be wonderful. But getting those drawings done is so that we, the board and uh, the restaurant, are on the same page about. Yeah. What's uh, being done. With, and I'm not trying to be obstructionist, but. Uh, no, with, without a doubt, and I think that's important. I just uh, want this to go as smoothly as possible. And, and if there is the space, I, I hope that we can utilize it. Um, so I think that uh, I'm sure that the town and uh, Angela can come to a, to a resolution on that as uh, sure. easily and as quickly as possible. But I hope that that venue that. Um, can be looked at at least. Absolutely. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. And, and just to piggyback on back on uh, Mr. Burns' comments, I had the exact same uh, questions on that. It may not be six four seat tables. Um, this is this approval will be contingent to subject to um, amendments and review by the planning department because I understand the ADA crosswalk. Um, which is yet to really be designed, and I think that's where we come into play with the 420 and the 476 square feet. Um, so I would, if, if you can get six four-seat tables out there that complies with our ADA requirements and other others, that will be great. But just so you know, that's contingent upon the fact that um, that may necessarily not be the case 
um, after we go through the Mass Ave redesign okay. so that we can s stay in concert with ADA requirements, especially around the crosswalk, cross ramp, which seems to be the area in questions, whether it's the 420 or 476. So um, okay. I agree with Mr. Byrne and his comments. Thank you. So it was moved by Mr. Dunn. Is there a second? Second. Second. So um, when would you hope to open, Angelo? Uh, well, it all depends on the construction that is going on there now. Right. And I don't know when they're going to be finished. Yeah. So um, I'm waiting for them, and then hopefully we can go through this, you know, okay. get this done. Right. So this is uh, this uh, we're we're all very much in support. I have often enjoyed eating inside this restaurant, and will certainly enjoy eating outside. Right, this thank restaurant you very much. I appreciate well. that. Thank you. Uh, but it is subject to uh, further plans and approved by plan. Okay. Right. Very good. All those in favor, Excuse please me. signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Best of luck. Thank you very much. Have a good night, everyone. Thank See you later. Thank Take you. care. Talk to you tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. And I bring back that veal chop with the pistachio sauce. Uh, <laughs> not a requirement. It's not a requirement for this license, I want you to know, though. Uh, so, <laughs> request for alter alteration of uh, premises, common ground, Mr. Leone. Good evening. I'm here for Bob O'Gwin. He couldn't make it tonight. Um, this is really just a technicality to clean up one of the we didn't realize when Mr. O'Gwin made his application, we had to actually tell the ABCC. So this is our only process to do it, is to come in and ask for a change of application. As you know, he's already up and running, so it's just to get your approval to let the state know what we're doing. Okay. Move approval. Second. Second. Discussions? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Been a great success, hasn't it, John? Yeah, he's done really well. Yeah. Um, He's had lines many nights of the week to sit outside. Yeah. I'm not sure how it is the last couple of days, but people want to be out there. How hot it it's is, really yeah. spruced up the area. <laughs> yeah, I, and I, it looks good. I really like it, and I'm, I, I must say, it's, it seems each time I've driven by at night, there's, there's no tables available. Yeah, and it, it livens up that part of the center with the yeah. umbrellas and everything. It's, it's great. It's working great. out well. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yes, yeah, sure. uh, Next is a. Re all set? Okay. Yeah. A request for food vendor's license, Magic Bites Bakery. And Tila was Kefli. Am I in the ballpark? Am I close at all? You're close, but it's written wrong. So Attila was Kefli. Okay, sorry. Okay. Yes, sir. What is it you're requesting? Food vendor license. Right. So, Tell us a little bit about okay, the business. Um, so it's going to be an American-European type bakery. Uh, it, there's going to be no seating because we don't have uh, Ada bathroom. So we're going to be serving breakfast, um, cakes, um, croissants. Uh, we're going to be bringing um, eclair also, um, pies, uh, turnovers, um, and most of the recipes are <clears throat> tried, but not tried in uh, US. So um, we have to uh, make sure that you like uh, all. Uh, so we will do our best to serve you the best food. Um, it's going to be all um, scratch. Um, it's going to be made all from scratch there. Uh, uh -huh. We're planning to provide health food. Um, there are going to be some beverages. Uh, we're going to serve also. Um, a, a brand uh, cafe, Lavazza Cafe, uh, and my tea, uh, tea. Um, and if we are successful in the first year, uh, we're going to be um, adding some seating also, uh, if we can make enough money. Okay, so, <laughs> good. So I appreciate your uh, support then. Uh, uh, did you bring any samples? Uh, when I got the license, yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, for, first, I want to say move approval. Um, secondly, I happened to um, bump into at the uh, My wife. Yes. Yeah, okay. And, I don't know if she mentioned it. On, yeah, on she Saturday, did. you were yep. feeding yep. your workers. Um, and this is the bakery right across from Stop and Shop. Exactly. Um, which I was very sad to see that um, the previous bakery had closed because when I first lived in Arlington, we had, I can't tell you how many bakeries. 
Um, and there's now two or three great ones in East Arlington, yeah. and you'll be the only one in the Heights. But I met your wife. She was such a wonderful, good soul. Um, and I, trust I wish you all nothing but the best. And I'm so, so excited much. that that corner right there next to Blue Ribbon will continue to be a bakery. Um, and we'll come in and buy some samples. Um, I appreciate it so much. Thank and look you. forward to it. And I'm thrilled that you're opening at 7 in the morning on the weekdays yep. versus 8. Because that really, yeah, you know, you're going to um, be opening at seven. But I know you'll evaluate that to see yep. if that's, you know, with, within your POS and your business plan. Yep. Um, but I know a lot of people, especially going down to the high school during the seasonal time, um, the bakery they're not opening until eight. A lot of people said, "Gee, I wish it was seven o'clock." So I, I, I saw in your business plan you sort of have some seasonal hours. Yep. So maybe the seven a.m. opening, you may again want to tie that into a season. Um, in concert, in, at, at the same time that the high school, um, which is September to June. Exactly. And then you may want to reevaluate in the summer. I'm not telling you how to do your business or conduct your business plan. Thank you so much. But for I know a lot of people from the September to June for high school used to always say, gee, I wish that bakery was open at 7 versus 8. So, But that's for you to decide. And, and Thank you, you so much. Your wife was a pleasure to meet, and God bless you for feeding your workers, and I wish you all nothing but the best. Yeah, Mr. Kara. You gonna have that nice strong Turkish coffee? Um, for you, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'll second Ms. Mahan's motion. <laughs> for the committee. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Yeah. Uh, okay, so it is uh, move approval, subject to all conditions as set forth. You understand all the inspections and the rest that you've okay, already sir. gone through. Um, so all of those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Opening, when hoping? Most probably end this month. End of yeah. August. Yeah. Okay, great. great. Thank you very much for choosing Arlington for your business. Best Thank of luck, so sir. sir. I'll Thank be you. in for those samples, Thank but you. I'll pay for <laughs> <laughs> And now under 14, approval for Hackney Carriage License Renewals. We, are, we haven't made any changes on the insurance because we are still waiting for the state legislature, but uh, is there a motion to approve uh, these licenses uh, that will be status quo at this point? Move approval. Is there a second? Second. Second. Discussion? Questions? No changes. Nothing? Bueller? Bueller, anybody? Mm. All those in favor, please say them by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. So there, this in total is 39 licenses out of 42, but uh, we're, good, we're, we're approving the existing ones at this point and uh, doing nothing yet again until we hear from the state. Everybody okay with that? Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, Citizens Open Forum, sign in. I'm guessing this is Elaine Ashton from Lexington. Yes. Elaine, welcome. Introduce myself. Um, I, I'm Elaine Ashton, 32 Cliff Avenue, Lexington. Um, town meeting member, uh, Precinct 1. Uh, president, uh, East Lexington Citizens uh, Association. And also formerly a resident of Lexing uh, <laughs> Lexington Heights, uh, Arlington Heights. Um, I spoke this morning with uh, our conservation person because I live down next to the reservoir and I enjoy the reservoir and I was very excited to see the clearing of the reservoir but like last year I noticed that again it was only half and I understand both, both positions of both towns but that still leaves us with a half cleared reservoir and uh, the, the half that, you know, is near, nearest Lexington is, is really pretty bad. And, you know, since it's an invasive species, it doesn't really do much to clear only half because it grows back. And, you know, I don't know if there's anything that, if there's some grassroots efforts, is there some fundraising, you know, what would it take to clear the, the other half? Because you know, it doesn't help anybody, and I understand challenges. I understand my town's position as well. So, you know, I'd like to put it out there that, you know, we'd like to help, 
<laughs> what merry band of people I, I might be able to bring, um, and perhaps even from Arlington, um, to help get that solved. So uh, may I, I assume you're talking about the Lexington section, that it's not the Arlington part, is that correct? Well, it's my you know understanding, oh, I'm sorry. No, that's right, um, please. Yeah, no, it's, it's my understanding that um, at least from, from the people I, work, uh, I have talked to in, in Lexington, uh, that Arlington owns all of the reservoir. That's true. Yes. That's true. And that um, uh, it's, it's e including even the bench in Ringe Park, which is um, you know, still land west of the reservoir, which uh, you know, I've requested <laughs> to have replaced or fixed in, in Lexington, but it came back that you actually own it. Um, so, um, I was going to say, <laughs> and that's okay. So, yeah, may I go to Adam? I think it, no, I wanted to understand yeah. more, and I think Adam's about to. Th thank you, Mr. Chair. So, uh, I, you alluded to understanding Lexington's position, uh, but just to for for uh, the board and for those watching at home, Lexington's position has been though the community abuts the reservoir, its residents enjoy passive recreation uh, to the reservoir, the Busa Farm, and now Lex Farm is adjacent to the reservoir and probably contributes to some degree runoff into the reservoir. <clears throat> they have over the past at least as many years as I've been here and prior to that refused to contribute even $5,000 a year uh, to helping to clean up the reservoir. So we're not not cleaning up the entire reservoir because of that, uh, but you know, with, with Arlington's limited resources, we put aside uh, you know, a significant amount of resources for us for cleaning every year. And um, you know, it, it's, I think it's a frustration point. I don't want to speak for the board, but I think it's a frustration point on the part of the Conservation Commission, on the part of the board here, that um, I, I just think good neighborly action uh, on the part of the town of Lexington would be to contribute uh, to some degree to the cleaning of the reservoir. But um, that's, that, that's all I want to say. Did, did I understand you? They, they did help originally, but now. Uh, not, not that I'm aware no, of. No, no we do. Okay, Mr. Dunn. <clears throat> um, so the town's water bodies committee <laughs> is under the conservation committee, is that right? Uh, it's actually, it's a vision, it's sort it's of a, a subgroup of a subgroup of vision 2020. A vision 2020, okay. So one thought for you is that we, we do have a, we have a, this group uh, called the Water Bodies Subcommittee that studies not just the reservoir, but uh, you know, also our other ponds. And we also have a fund that we use to pay for our, all of our water body work that we replenish at town meeting periodically. And what you suggest, one of the things you brought up was, you know, grassroots or other actions on the Lexington side that might be interesting. And it might be interesting if you connect with our water body subcommittee and then, and like, and because they're activists, right? You know, they're people who are very excited about maintaining town water. And it may be that the, uh, your, your efforts combined with theirs can get uh, what you're, the changes you're looking for in, uh, specifically in the reservoir. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. Okay, wait. There might be others. Anybody oh, else? Oh, No. No. Okay. Bob, is your hand raised about this issue? Oh. You're not signed in. Sorry, pal. Sorry, pal. <laughs> Anything else for Elaine? No. Well, thank you for ra raising our awareness on this, and it is something certainly that I intend to look into. But. Uh, well, thank you. Have you noticed, by the way, how well run this town is versus Lexington? <laughs> Actually, I was going to comment how. Um, Young, your board of selectmen is. Oh, God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> this, uh, oh, God, I hope nobody's watching at home. Thank you very much. Thank you for bringing that to our attention. All right, Bob, next time sign in. Well, I thought I was hoping to address uh, the previous issue about the restaurant. Okay. Uh, Bob Radosha, for those who can hear. Um, when I read the uh, request on this thing, I was a little disappointed to see that we're still looking at a $50 fee for this kind of space, and it, uh, I was hoping to see something different, uh, particularly in light of the cost to uh, the fee that's applied to other things if you want to rent some space at the tourist center or Jefferson Russell or whatever that is, it seems a little disproportionate to it. But anyway, that's another thing. Uh, the second item is, you know, the Mass Ave corridor was promote, promoted, you know, accessible sidewalks and a lot of wide sp spaces and things like that. That's a very congested area. And I find if you want to put a 
restaurant there, fine, no problem. But it's very congested. Um, ADA does indicate a five foot wide in terms of wheelchairs and passing by and so forth, five foot sidewalk. The AIA, American Institute of Architects, their recommendation is five foot minimum on a main sidewalk. Residential, four feet. Winter Street, Broadway, Warren Street, and Allen Street, five foot six plus. And so we're gonna go from a four, we're gonna narrow what looks like an eight foot sidewalk out there down to four, funnel it down, and around the corner on a residential street is a five and a half foot. Uh, it doesn't make sense to me, and uh, that's about all I need to say. But I mean, other, other than that, you know, it's, and it is a busy section there with the, uh, all the activity at the lights and the bicycles and the, everything else coming along, but that's not my problem. Okay, thank you. Hey, thank you, Bob. Uh, again, as you know, what we talked about before is the fee is related to the administrative costs, not for the town to make money. Okay, uh, so anybody else in Citizens Open Forum? Bill, are you all set here, buddy? Is there an item you want me to deal with? observing a friendly group. Wow. <laughs> Have you, well, give us a, we'll get fighting in a minute here. <laughs> <laughs> and we got AC, so you're all set. Okay. <laughs> item 15 for approval, a handicapped parking sign request by Phyllis Richter at 88 Hemlock Street. Move approval. Second. Is there a second? Is um, Ms. Richter here? Okay. Um, from what I saw, no objections from anybody. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so move approval. Second, somewhere. Second. Second. Second by Ms. Mahan. All those in, um, other comments. All said. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Um, by our Director of uh, Planning and Community Development, a request for two accessible parking spaces on Maple Street. Um, the first thing I have to ask is, what's the difference between accessible and handicap? There's no, no, no difference. Okay. It's, it's, I wondered what the Just phrasing was. Fa fancy terminology. Huh? Just fancy terminology. Just fancy. Okay. Move approval. Move approval. Is there a second? Second. Uh, all of those in favor, please signify our uh, discussion. Sure. Anybody right. against this? Oh, Mr. Dunn? I'm certainly not against it. I'm, I, am in fa for, uh, for, I am in favor of it. I'm just <coughs> surprised that there is, um, I, I was surprised to find that there was none, really. It was my reaction to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and I guess there is some on the other side of the building, maybe, that, but uh, obviously. There is. Yeah, There's handicapped yeah. spaces along the side of the building. But not, the, but, these, but these are the only not two on, on Maple that. Street. Yeah. Uh, so, um, Yes, I'm, I mean, I'm absolutely, but I was, and I was really quite surprised to find out that we, we're at zero all right, right, currently. Okay. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh -huh. All those opposed. And it seems like we've just had a committee walk in to discuss the tree <laughs> preservation bylaw for 2016. Who's going to uh, speak on this matter, please, Susan? So you're outside strategizing. How do we deal with this board when we get in there? <laughs> you got advice from John Leone, too. <laughs> Please, tell us, talk to us, yeah. Hi, I'm Mary Ellen Arano. I'm at right. 22 Addison Street. Um, I'm the co-chair of the Arlington Tree Committee. Mm -hmm. And um, the Tree Committee works alongside the DPW's Tree Department. And our mission is to promote the protection, care, and planting of trees in Arlington. Well, we're here tonight um, 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 uh, because we were approached by a number of residents similar to when we were formed in 2010. Um, we were formed and were uh, Board of Selectmen appointed. We were formed in 2010 when there was a somewhat of a residential crisis on um, NSTAR pruning in town. Well, we've um, heard sort of similar cries about um, tree cutting um, on de for development in town. And so um, what our committee typically does is we appoint um, subcommittees. And Susan Stamps here is the, the lead of the subcommittee for a tree preservation bylaw that we'd like to um, um, talk to you tonight about. 
Hi, all. Susan Stamps, member of the Tree Committee, 39 Grafton Street. So um, do you have the materials that we sent? So I, I did a memorandum for you explaining that in the last several months, many residents from the town have approached the Tree Committee upset about clear cutting of lots in their neighborhoods um, during construction and wondering what can be done about this. They moved into a leafy neighborhood and suddenly there are huge holes in the tree canopy. The tree committee felt that was a very important concern and did some research and was frankly surprised to find that the town has no ability whatsoever to prevent um, the cutting of trees on private property. And further research showed that actually there are many area municipalities that do have such tree bylaws. Um, and those include Cambridge, Newton, Lexington, Wellesley, and some other municipalities, as well as across the country. Some, on, in some places, they're state level rather than city and town level. We feel that um, there's been a lot of talk in Arlington about um, housing pressure. Housing prices are going up. And we know that there have been teardowns and, and, and division of lots that have created large houses and um, a lot of trees have come down, big, majestic, old trees have come down, not just regular trees in the course of this. And this is not what the residents of Arlington want. The master plan that we just completed addressed this, as I mentioned in my memo, in many, many places, talking about how the built environment of Arlington had to be maintained um, in harmony with the natural environment and the health and well-being of the community. And when you clear cut an entire lot of trees, that is not consistent with those goals at all. And one of the, um, one of the many goals outlined in the master plan was to investigate, um, research and investigate protection uh, regulations which would uh, protect or preserve or regulate the removal of trees on private property. That was in the summary of um, recommendations as an intermediate goal and the, the summary said that we should look into it. Well, based on everything the tree committee has seen in town and heard in town, we need to do more than just look into it. We need to do something and we need to do it as quickly as possible. There are, um, I've networked with a lot of, um, with some town boards, um, town officials, um, some of our town media members who don't necessarily support regulations as a matter of principle. And there is a general agreement on the part of everyone that this is something that the town needs. Um, and I think that we can work with all the interest groups to put together a bylaw in time for the next town meeting. And we hope that the, the board will support that. And ideally, we would hope that it would be the board's motion. If you have any, uh, I'm happy to go into more details. Um, the, the, the first question that people ask is, oh, does that mean I can't take down my tree in my backyard? No, all of the bylaws that we've looked at and the one that we will be looking at for Arlington only regulates removal of, private, uh, of trees on private property during um, demolition, reconstruction, major construction, additions where the footprint of the house is increased by more than 50%, those kinds of major um, constructions. And we like the Wellesley bylaw the best. What um, typically what all these towns do is that they make the removal of trees, the, the contractor's removal of trees part of the permitting process. So not only do they file an application for building per permit with their plans for what they want to put up and how they're going to do it, but they also file a tree plan. Here are the trees on the property, here are the ones we want to remove and why, and then work with the, normally the tree warden, which, and we will have a tree warden in town soon, we hope. Um, the tree warden would work with the developer to figure out what trees really need to come down. Um, and 
most of these towns, if trees do need to come down, then they need to be replaced elsewhere on the property, or if that's not possible, then the, the developer pays into a tree fund to pay for the town to put, to plant trees in the area to kind of mitigate the issue. So, Ms. Mahan and Mr. Kuro. Um I have two, possibly three questions. First one is I also looked at the different cities and towns that you submitted, um, and I'm gonna, I agree with you in terms of the Wellesley model. I'm just curious um, in terms of the certified arborist that's cited in the Wellesley um, outline that they have adopted for this particular structure. Who, who bears the cost for that? Is it shared or is it something that perhaps we don't know because we're not in the town of Wellesley? Well, um, I, the town is looking for a new tree warden now. I don't think, I think that's public knowledge. Mm -hmm. And um, I believe that one of the requirements is that they be a certified arborist. Is that right? Correct. Yeah. Yes, I think that's part of a state statute that has to do with tree wardens. Okay. So, so it would be part of their responsibility. So if, if Arlington adopted a, a model similar to Wellesley, which is the one that I really kind of was akin to, um, our tree warden, um, would be the certified arborist. So it wouldn't be an over and above. And yes. then I have an, a question. I know Ms. Stamps is an attorney as, as well as Attorney Heim, and I don't know if this is appropriate, but um, I know a lot of people are probably thinking about this in terms of residences and private homes. Would this apply to uh, business? It, stop me if I start going into an area I shouldn't have, but business and or 40B developments? Um, I don't know if you know where I'm going with that. Uh, is, is that something I can even go in that route? Like in terms of, I, I looked at the Wellesley as well as Weston and Cambridge and Lexington. It seems largely based around um, private residences. I'm thinking in terms of um, for-profit business commercial development. Um, if we could also make that apply, if this, this was something to go forward, I, I don't really see that in any of those models. I don't know, if, Attorney Heim, if I'm going in an area that I shouldn't, or? Um, so I'd certainly have to look into that. That's a pretty complicated question, because usually when you're talking about uh, residential property development, you're not talking about a uh, scale um, that would start to get in, into issues of constructive takings. So that's something that we'd have to really look at and consider very carefully in the construction by law. I think that's more or less consistent with what um, the tree committee has put together, which is really well researched. Mm -hmm. um, and I certainly appreciated all the information they provided, that this has been primarily oriented around the issue within residential communities. And in the, if, especially if this was in a zoning bylaw, I think it would mm -hmm. logically reflect that. But I would want to consult with uh, inspectional services. I'd want to consult. Um, with a number of other folks before I would make a judgment as to whether something definitively could be applied to a commercial um, building permit if that was the model that indeed mm -hmm. the town adopted. Okay, and, I, that okay. Again, I'm, and I'm not trying to create any exhaustive cum cumbersome search for anyone, but what I would say is what I would like to see if Arlington, if, if I had my druthers and I'm just mm -hmm. speaking for myself, um, not that I'm not speaking for anybody else, but just speaking for myself, that this would apply to everything in Arlington, whether you're a PUD, an R5, an R6, mm -hmm. an R1. If, I, I think you probably know the, the vein that I'm going in on that. Um, well, I do think that's our starting point. Okay, thank you. I just um, wanted to but I think with commercial properties, you're probably not gonna see a lot of commercial properties with a lot of open space around the structure like you see in the neighborhoods um, with a lot of trees. But um, I, I don't know, you know. I'm I, just thinking about a, a property that's Hines. before us right now yes. that's going to kill a lot of the vegetation so, and oh. trees. So, so just to, I'm sorry, to interject. Yes. May, may I, Mr. Chairman? Uh, no, yes. I'm done. Yes. Just uh, the one thing I would keep in mind is the Comprehensive Permit Act is exactly that. It's a Comprehensive, per comprehensive Permit Act. And one of its primary functions is to um, diplomatically putting this uh, circumvent certain local barriers to development. And so I'm not sure exactly how this type of bylaw would, um, especially since we don't know exactly what the parameters would be, how it would play out. But remember that the 40B process is oriented around uh, removing local barriers that are mostly codified in your zoning and town bylaws. There's certain ones that can't be, but um, it's, it's not likely that we would 
develop something that would be so attached to state law that it would be fruitful in terms of um, addressing a 40B issue. So that part is, is very clear. Mr. Kira. Thank you very much. Thank you for all of the material that you, provide, you provided with us. It was a lot to uh, go through, but I actually uh, especially appreciate the grid with the, the comparison of each mm. of the communities and how they've approached this. I also appreciate um, all the references you have in here to the master plan. This did rise up through the master plan process as an issue, and you've, you've uh, noted the, the four or six different references where it was specifically um, uh, raised. Um, I think Ms. Ms. Mahan raised like uh, one of the issues that, you know, I think we, we heard this last week, and I think a lot of us have heard this in various other uh, instances as a concern of, of residents. Um, both as regards that major project, as regards, um, um, you know, as it rose up through the master plan uh, <clears throat> process. It's certainly been articulated as a priority in some other instances by the town, too. For example, I, I know with the Sims redevelopment uh, project, there was a process very similar to what you just described, going through and doing an inventory and, and ensuring that where cutting had to be done, that there was a replacement uh, process in that case. And I know that our revamped uh, Board of Survey regs also envisioned um, you know, tree replacement um, as well. So I think it's consistent with what we've been hearing from, from the residents. And I think if, if we choose to go forward and work with the, the, the tree committee on trying to draft a proposed um, bylaw, it is important that we draw some of the lessons from the other towns around, for example, flexibility. I noticed it looked like most, if not all, of the bylaws you presented do provide some flexibility where if there is uh, an option taken not to perform the, the tree replacement or, or um, you know, to go ahead and take down the trees, there is a possibility of um, <clears throat> paying compensation into the fund. Yes, Presumably something that. equivalent to our Trees Please fund that we have here. Um, in town. And I just had, I think the first question you're going to get, assuming we go forward, were to go forward to town meeting with um, a proposal like this, is going to be around the enforcement. And I think, um, I wonder if in your conversations with other communities, obviously the tree warden's involved up front with doing that, that inventory, but is the tree warden also working with the building department before certificates of occupancy are, are issued, or, or how, how have you heard that working in other communities? Well, the impression that I've gotten um, is that the, it, it just goes, the, the tree permitting goes right along with the, the building permitting process. So I would imagine that it would follow the same process where the permit's issued, and then there's somebody checking up to make sure that the, um, that the requirements of the building permit or the tree permit are being followed all the way along the way. And that eventually there's, it's signed off on with an, an occupancy permit. Yeah. And um, just one more question. You, you provide us with a bunch of bylaws. You indicated that Wellesley is kind of the, the one that you um, <clears throat> By most attractive, can you, in a couple of sentences, summarize why you find that to be the strongest of the, uh, the well, bylaws? Well, Lexington, um, the the spirit of the Lexington bylaw is great, um, and it, it ends up accomplishing pretty much what the Wellesley <coughs> bylaw <coughs> um, does. But there are two major differences. One is that it regulates within certain setbacks, defined setbacks on the properties. Now, I think most of the properties in Lexington, except maybe if they're right in the center of town are larger lots. So if they go in 12, 15 feet is the setback from the lot line, um, that, uh, you know, that's, if we went 12 or 15 feet in from lot lines, then we'd probably be in the, in the, um, in the building footprint um, in, in a lot of cases. So it, it seems unnecessary in Arlington to talk about setbacks, just to look at, <coughs> we should just look at all the the trees on the lot, figure out where the building's going to go and what needs to be removed. And then the other major difference with the Lexington bylaw is that that refers to a tree manual mm -hmm. throughout. And we went before the redevelopment board to discuss, to, to discuss the, our proposed tree bylaw, and all we had with us was the Lexington bylaw, and they immediately noticed that 
they said, oh, well, we have to write a tree manual first. And we said, no, we really don't need to write a tree manual. So that just, it sort of is very confusing. So that's why we're not even talking about the Lexington bylaw anymore. Thank you. Mr. Byrne. Uh, thank you very much. Um, have you engaged any developers um, in conversations on this yet? I have not talked to any actual building contractors. I've talked to people who have been um, otherwise involved in development. Here in Arlington? Yes. Okay, because I, I think they're, they're a really big part of this, and, and I know you mentioned um, at, at the, the beginning um, for people might not be comfortable with over-regulating, and that's something I, I'm, I am worried about here. Um, I think that there, there's certainly a balance that can be found, yes. but I, I think that um, they have to be a, a pretty big part of this conversation to hit that balance. Um, now, say um, after the conversations between the contractor uh, developer and um, the arborist, who would an aggrieved party go to if they disagree on the ruling? Um, well, um, that points out another um, difference between most of the towns that have the bylaws in Arlington, which is that there is some sort of appeals process. Um, now, in, in Arlington, if somebody doesn't like the terms of the building permit that the building inspector um, is insisting upon, there probably is an appeals process. Maybe it's to the Board of Selectmen. I really don't know. Um, but most of, is there? I'm no? Sure. Zoning board. Zoning board. If there's zoning board, yes. The zoning, the, okay, yeah. Um, uh, there would have to be something put in place. So that would be a new thing. Um, there's been discussion of, well, we could make the tree committee an appeals committee. I don't know that that's what the tree committee wants to do. But I see that as a, something that needs to be thought about. It's a really good question. Um, but I'm sure we can come up with something. Great. Uh, yeah, I think um, I think that will, will certainly be important. And um, I do think that we um, have to, another thing that to keep in mind is will, will this slow down the process? And will, you know, how, you know, we, I think that we don't want to stall the permitting process any, any more than we have to. And, and I hope that um, we can certainly find a way to you know, to add this and move it forward um, pretty seamlessly um, and integrate it into the process that we have. And I think we also have to, to keep in mind if we will need any um, new town employees to uh, carry this out. And um, so just things to keep on the table mm -hmm. and um, I hope you'll, um, I'm sure you'll look into them. As well, we, we know it's important to include all the stakeholders mm -hmm. and we plan to encourage that. Thank you. Mr. Dunn. Uh, thank you. Uh, so thank you for the all the documentation. It was very it was very interesting and it was a good read and you you put a lot of the good the uh, good stuff and you organized it well. So I it made made it easy, easier for me to think about it. Um, so one of the uh, one of the things that I got the most calls about last year were the trees in the cemetery that were taken down. The proposal that you guys have roughly, I understand, very early, loosely have in mind, wouldn't affect that. Is that correct? That would have been able, probably been able to happen as well, it was. Well, that's interesting. It's a really interesting question that I hadn't thought about in that there is a state tree law called the Public Shade Tree Law, Chapter 87, and that governs um, treatment of trees on public property. This was private property. Now, if you have a cemetery that's are you talking about a cemetery that's private property? Yeah, Saint private Paul's school, uh, school uh, church-owned. <laughs> right. I have no idea. Okay. That's something that our esteemed council would probably well, uh, okay. be able to figure out. I guess what if I understood the proposed bylaw correctly, and we're talking about set, like it would only be affecting things that are close to the road, then in this case, this proposed bylaw wouldn't have protected those particular trees. <coughs> is I, is, I'm just trying to make sure. That's the way I'm interpreting this, and I was just wondering if you shared that interpretation or not, or you just haven't got, you just didn't well, get there. Well, trees that are close to the road, if they're actually on town property, like on the tree strip or something, yeah. those are town trees. And if they're, um, people, in, the town is supposed to hold tree hearings if they're taking down a significant tree. So, but you're talking about on the private property yes. just back. Right. And um, there probably is something that can be done here. I don't have an answer to your question. Okay. All right. But it, I mean, if it's private property, it's private property. That's what this would cover. So I don't know why. But doesn't the... Pro but it's not in the context of construction, is right. what 
well, why did they take them down? Maybe they were diseased, and in which case they should have yeah. been taken down. No, they wanted the space. But, uh, but oh, okay. Well. Um, so, uh, I have some I have some mixed feelings about the proposal, and I'll, I'll be happy to, to share them with you. Uh, so, I look at the master plan. I'm very excited about, and I think that I. Uh, the zoning in Arlington really needs to be redone to um, to change the way we're growing because we're we're growing right now in some ways that we don't want because we wrote this uh, we wrote a lot of our zoning laws frankly back before I was born and uh, the town and everything around us has changed a lot so there's a comprehensive set of changes that needs to happen before to to zoning and we need town meeting to buy into that. And I'm a little bit worried that if we take a specific element of what's in the master plan of changes we need to do and we draw it out in front of the rest of it, in particular, if that thing that we're drawing out in front of the rest of it turns out to be particularly controversial, that it would keep us from being able to successfully reform our entire, you know, if we, if we screw it up, we poison the well, and then we're never going to be able to get these uh, changes through a town meeting that I think as a package are really important to the future of our town. And so uh, there's hints of like this that the, this proposal that could, I, in, depending upon how it actually shapes up, mm -hmm. could be uh, really controversial. And I think about, of course, things like the leaf blower. Like you know, if the leaf blower thing was yep. like if the leaf blower, if this becomes a leaf blower thing and it becomes a master plan thing, and then everything else that comes out of the master plan is a leaf blower thing, we're doomed. Like you know, it's not going to go anywhere. So like, sorry, I need to keep going. Um, and so. Uh, I could. I definitely can support a bylaw along these lines, if it successfully lines up people across the town meeting spectrum, and it becomes a non-controversial, easily passed thing. Mm -hmm. But if it is coming forward as something with strong opponents and strong, or sorry, strong proponents and strong opponents. I am going to probably be opposed to it because I don't want something divisive. I want us to, as a town, come together and make a whole set of zoning bylaws. So, um, okay. can yeah, um, yeah, sure. Um, I have one other comment, but I'll, I'll listen to. The, uh, how, how we, well, yeah. I really don't foresee the the um, the leaf blower anti leaf blower community coming out against this bylaw. Okay. Um, based on some conversations that I've had. And they, um, there may be changes made to the bylaw. For example, the, uh, the bylaws we've looked at have certain calipers or diameters of trees that are so-called protected trees. Those are the trees that the town is interested in, in not having taken down if it can be prevented. Maybe the tree caliper needs to be larger. Um, but I, you know, the, the leaf blower issue was about, I think, people wanting to get their jobs done effectively in a way that they felt was the best way. Perfectly reasonable position. Um, these people probably love trees as much as the rest of us. And it's not going to affect their businesses. We don't get leaves without trees, right? <laughs> need to be blown. Um, so I, I, we, I agree. We, I hear you, but I need we, to. But I need to hear. I need to be more convinced than. Okay. What, what, you know, than what than your suggestion. And and one, and one other tangential thought is I had earlier this year a, di a totally different group and a totally different issue approach me privately and seek my advice about getting something passed through town meeting and they wanted to know whether or not uh, if they came for the selectman whether or not the, you know the selectman would endorse it and make a select motion. My advice to them actually was to do it themselves as a grassroots effort because it would get more support at town meeting coming from them than it would from the board. Mm -hmm. So I'm not entirely Ow. sure. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure that you want us to make this uh, us a, a, a board motion. So, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Can I just make one quick comment about one thing that Mr. Dunn said, which was that I, I don't think it's a choice between a new package of zoning bylaws and the tree preservation bylaw, but if you were to compare with all due respect, it takes 50 to 100 years to grow a really beautiful, good-sized tree in Arlington. And if the bylaws don't get through this year, well, maybe they'll get through next year. I'm just saying that, you know, I know the bylaws are very important, but it's also really important. We, we can't replace the trees that come down in Actually, our lifetimes. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, may I ask one more? Sorry. 
Yes, sir. sorry. I Go actually, on. you reminded me of something actually that I forgot to ask. Uh, one of the th arguments you, made, you, you just reiterated is that quick is important. Can you help me understand what you think the risks are of waiting a year? Again, I just said it. Uh, but no, Once the well, trees are like down, they can't be replaced in our lifetimes. So do you, and, you, for, you, and you think we're, what rate are we, do, do you think the problem exists right now? Um, it's increasing. There's a lot of people concerned about it. We don't have a tree inventory in town yet. We're trying to get money to do a tree inventory. So we don't really have good metrics to know. Okay. But Thank if you. you look around and you talk to your neighbors, I think you'll see it's a problem. We do have some um, people here who'd like to offer some comments if you have time. Um, I, do you mind if I speak first? Or? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Haley. No, that's all right. I let them all go first and then so um, first of all I want to say thank you for respecting the Board of Selectmen and asking us to um, uh, sponsor this for you although listen carefully to Mr. Dunn um, in terms of town meetings uh, mm -hmm. feelings about that let, let me ask um, what makes a tree unremovable? Is it age? Is it type of tree? Or is it yes? Is it to both of those? What? In other words, if I'm in a neighborhood and there's a hundred maple trees on that street, and I want to remove a maple tree that's 50 years old to add an addition on my house, mm -hmm. right? Do you see that being stopped? If there is some way to avoid it, yes, it would. If there is no way to avoid it, it's not going to be stopped. But you will be asked if there's another place on your property to plant another tree. And if there isn't any place on your property, then to pay some amount into a tree fund so that the town can play, uh, plant another tree somewhere in the area so that the tree canopy isn't really that affected. Right. I mean, yes. I see that as very reasonable. The, if you remove a tree for construction, you have to plant two. But that, and whether it's on that property or somewhere in town or I don't know, in a park or whatever. Um, but if there are trees that are so dear that we don't want them removed, I don't understand why this wouldn't also apply then to private citizens where we can say, well, you can take down a tree in your own yard if you want, if you're not gonna construct anything or going for a permit. See well, what I mean? Uh, oh, I, I'm just. I see what you mean. I definitely don't think that would get through town meeting. And none of the other tree bylaws we've looked at apply to a, a, a tree here and there on somebody's property right. so but we're the, not interested in that I just you know the comment mr. Byrne made is when I was going to have we talked to developers about this and what this means um, um, you know so it's I'm hesitant but it's a great idea and you're doing great work and you know please continue to Thank you. protect uh, trees to whatever degree we can it's it's in the fine print of what trees we can't remove, and if we can't, why, why, why can anybody remove them on their property? But I, I understand about enforcement. I mean, that's, that's true around town, and mm -hmm. the bulldozer that backs up and knocks over that tree it wasn't supposed to, then what? Uh, then what do we do in that case? But anyhow, you wanted others to speak, Susan? Um, we do have a few others here, and I, I noticed that Ed Trembley from the tree committee is here, and it's not a secret to anybody who's familiar with town meeting that Ed is one of those people that I mentioned who tends to be a little anti-regulation and I think I, it would be instructive for you to hear how he feels about this proposed bylaw. Hello. Um, yeah, Mr. Dunn, to, to, to speak to your concerns. Uh, when this idea first came up, I did have a conversation with some of the other uh, folks in town meeting who are concerned about uh, regulating ourselves to death. And the general consensus is that we don't actually mind too much. I mean, I can't, I'm, I'm speaking now for myself, but I, I think this is a fair representation. We're not, we like trees. And, and we also have eyes and see the rate at which some of these big house lots, you know, where, where, where somebody comes in and tears down two houses and builds three, and they pretty much clear cut everything. Hmm. And the town is losing trees at a pretty substantial rate. And so they weren't too concerned about um, the law, the bylaw as written. 
I think Susan's right. If there was a, a move afoot to regulate trees on private property without that 50% footprint or you know, the, 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 um, the uh, clause there about uh, demolition of, the pro uh, of a structure, th there would be more trouble. But as it now stands, I, I don't think town meeting is, is going to have a huge objection to, uh, to a bylaw that seeks to preserve trees in the co within the context of construction, uh, building construction. And, and I think it's a reasonable compromise to, if a tree does need to be removed, that can either be planted on the property somewhere else or somewhere else in town. I mean, I, I think the, uh, the folks that I talked to would agree that that's a reasonable compromise. And uh, so. Thank you. Um, thank you. Um, just really quickly, the, the third part of our, our presentation was we did give you some pictures showing before and after, which um, Sally Nash from the Tree Committee just wanted to have a quick word about that, Is that if that's okay. Of course. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Sally Nash, 5 Old Colony Road, uh, past member of, uh, past chair, I should say, of the Tree Committee and a current member. Um, I just wanted to walk you through and make a few comments about some of the pictures that we provided. And then if there is time afterwards, there are um, a couple of people in the audience who are um, directly affected by some of these uh, situations. And if there's time, we would like to be able to uh, give them their say. So the, the first one I think you have is the 27 Oldham Road, which is a, a corner lot and I think it's pretty clear that there have been significant tree removals on this lot in order to build two large houses. There has in fact been, um, I believe, a total of 13 trees that were taken down, and some of these were really sizable trees. The uh, second set of pictures um, of five Lakeview Street. If you're, the, the uh, before picture shows a a view directly down um, Spring Valley Street. And I think you'll see by looking at the second picture, the after picture, that in fact there are multiple stumps. There are something like 40 stumps counted of trees that were taken down on that property. I will grant you these are not all huge trees, but when you consider the numbers that are taken down, the amount of canopy that that removes is a, a significant blow to the town. And then the uh, last property, the 8 Oldham Road, um, in my own neighborhood here, if you compare the two photographs, you'll see that the, um, the tall pine trees and evergreens remain uh, because those are our neighboring properties. But in the foreground of those trees, you'll see that there are, in fact, others that have been removed again to build two properties on the same site. So. May I introduce a couple of people to um, address these? So the first is uh, Diane Dupont, who is on Oldham Road. Thank you, Diane Dupont, 32 Oldham Road. And I'm a town meeting member, Precinct 13. And I took uh, those pictures of those 13 trees from my living room. And I would say in the past year, to address Mr. Dunn's question, at least 10%, if not more, of the trees on Oldham Road have been removed. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'd say in the past five years, 20 to 25% of the trees on Oldham Road have been removed. Where those uh, 13 trees were removed, the, the two houses are there now constructed. And I can say that not all of those trees needed to be removed to um, construct those houses. Um, one of the things is when you remove a tree, there's other implications besides the beauty. And there's the climate issue because trees also uh, cool an area. They also absorb water for flooding. So when the house was built next to me, they tore down a small house, built a large house. It's a larger footprint, a larger parking pad, and removal of trees. So consequently, there's not enough uh, I think for houses being built, there's a lot of codes out there to protect those houses from flooding, but it doesn't protect 
the neighbors. And so when you remove the trees, you add larger footprint, guess where the water goes? It goes to you know, people next door. So then I had to bear the cost of, uh, of doing mitigating uh, landscape and other uh, hardscape and a lot, of, a lot of things like that to mitigate the problems I had because you now had larger footprint and less water absorption. So um, that's a, a couple of things that um, also need to be uh, dealt with. And to address Mr. Burns' um, uh, item of overregulation, well, don't we need some regulations to protect the neighbors as well? And I'm not against uh, tree removal in total because there was one house on Oldham Road that had too many trees. There was mold growing on the roof and things like that. So there, there are times when trees do need to be removed and trimmed and that sort of thing. And also in light of the fact that the town is planning to develop a working group to focus and address climate resiliency and climate adaptation, it would seem to me the town and part of the master plan and working, you know, forming this working group that uh, you know, the trees need to be addressed. So um, that's the, my point, the flooding, the neighbors, the climate impact of tree removal. Thank you. <coughs> Larry Englisher, who also is um, in, the, in the neighborhood of Oldham Road. Yes, good evening. Um, my name is Larry Englisher, and I live on Lantern Lane, also in the uh, Morningside neighborhood uh, near uh, Diana. And I, I just want to mention that uh, the large mature trees that are in um, our section of, of Arlington are an important factor in people choosing to live in the neighborhood. It's one of the most uh, you know, pleasant features and characteristics of, of the neighborhood. And so the people who are current residents of the town and future residents have an, an investment and, and a, um, a desire to uh, maintain the tree canopy. And um, since I moved in about 17 years ago, I would say about 20 homes have been built or rebuilt within about um, two blocks of my, of, of my house. And um, this is an area that was already fully developed, so um, it was kind of surprising. And many, many mature trees, and I'm talking about very, very large trees, very large evergreens, very large oaks, um, have been cut down as homes were expanded and uh, rebuilt. And in many cases, there have been these cases of two um, houses being built on one lot where the lot got, got split. This seems to be a common uh, thing that um, developers are very attracted to right now. So uh, in, with respect to uh, Mr. Dunn's comment, I don't think we really have a lot of time to respond to some of this because they're disappearing very, very fast in our neighborhood. And some of the lots are really being clear cut. And as uh, Deanna mentioned, when you look at the houses that go up afterwards, um, some of the trees really didn't need to be cut. If there was any interest in preserving some of the trees, it, it could have been done. But right now, we really have no um, the town has no control, the neighbors have no control. When you have, uh, when you're meeting the current zoning, you build and you get a permit and there is no public process. If you have a, uh, uh, an exception, then you go through the Zoning Board of Appeal and then there's a community process where neighbors have something to say. Right now we have no protection in our, in our general bylaws for trees and we really don't have any protection in the zoning bylaw and so a lot of stuff is just happening and it happens right away. The developer buys the land, they cut all the trees down so there really isn't anything to save by the time it's just a, it's a done deal and um, the, having a bylaw like this would give uh, at least uh, some time to review with a developer what their plans are and make sensible decisions and I think other towns that have face this problem, have developed sensible laws. They're not you know, crazy laws that are just uh, preventing people from developing. They're generally in response to the fact that these towns are desirable areas and there are developers building um, new and larger homes. And I think Arlington is in that, in that situation. And I trust that you know, with the, the, the tree committee, the Zoning Board of Appeals, the Board of Selectmen, every, everybody getting together, we can develop something that is fair and balanced and everybody's interest can be protected for the benefit of us all. And uh, just in closing, I'd want to say that if we don't really act on this right of way, right away, 
then um, we really won't have those trees to protect. And um, it, it's, it's happening very fast. So thank you for your time. So that, that was all we had. We hope the selectmen will help us. And like I said, I, I do understand that uh, it's, um, we hope the selectmen will actually feel like promulgating the motion. Um, it, it will definitely be a grassroots effort no matter who is who is putting forth the motion. Yes, Mr. Hein. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I just want to make a few notes uh, quickly. Um, first, that again, I, I also have to commend the tree committee for doing a tremendous amount of research when they sort of first presented this idea. There were a number of questions that immediately popped to my mind, and with the use of their handy dandy chart, uh, most of those questions were already answered. Uh, the couple things that I think the board should keep in mind and the tree committee should keep in mind is that it's early and that's good. So we're very early in the process. Obviously, if, there, uh, if, if there's a consideration about a special town meeting or something like that, it's important to have everything, all your ducks in a row as much as possible. But there are really two key things that the board sort of needs to consider and that the tree committee in the town needs to consider in the sort of more immediate sense. One is, should it be under zoning or general bylaws? Because that's one of the things you'll see that they highlighted in the research is that actually a lot of these tree bylaws are in general bylaws rather than zoning bylaws. Mm -hmm. Meaning that it isn't necessarily going to be uh, part of a uh, change to the zoning bylaws, uh, which do definitely need comprehensive reform. Uh, secondly, the, uh, the uh, question of who should enforce the bylaw and enforcement issues. You'll see under a lot of these different uh, models in different towns, sometimes it's a tree warden, sometimes it's a conservation commission, sometimes it's inspectional services. Some of that depends a little bit on the model that would be most effective. I think one of the things that we're hearing from the tree committee is that the nice part about having a model that runs through the permitting process is that most of it's done up front rather than going out um, afterwards and trying to say, what do these people do at this site because it's tied to permitting? The only, uh, and, and, and because they did a lot of this advanced research, I tried to uh, sort of pull a fellow municipal legal counsel to try to see their perspectives on it. it. Didn't get a lot of helpful response in terms of enforcement issues or what models were better or worse. Um, I think Ms. Stamps had the helpful suggestion of just going more directly to the source. And I'm sorry to say, I just haven't really gotten a chance to do that as much as I would have liked in advance of tonight's meeting. But I suppose what I'm saying is that this board can certainly, if it wants, my, if it wants to direct me to try to work with the tree committee to further develop an option to present to this board, whether it's zoning or a, ultimately a town bylaw, doesn't necessarily matter. Obviously, all town bylaws come through the board of selectmen at some point or another. And as we've had experience uh, relatively recently, this board can certainly make a recommendation to the ARB to adopt a uh, zoning bylaw if they like. So I wanted to put the option out there that it'd be happy if the board's direction to try to work with the tree committee to uh, develop a more detailed proposal. The one piece that I think is really important that I just don't think that we have been able to and we just can't work on right now is obviously getting the perspective and insights of the director of inspectional services integral because any model that is focused on permitting is essential to get uh, his point of view on it and uh, you know for, for you know reasons we haven't been able to uh, connect you know with him on, on, on that and afforded the time to do that I think I could help flesh out um, a more detailed proposal with these folks mm. if let, me add, like. let me ask two town council mr. chapter or members of the board here do we foresee calling a special town meeting for any reason coming up? Uh, there, there is, a, thank you, Mr. Chairman, there is the possibility of one uh, being necessary to fund a, a portion of the Stratton renovation project. Uh, I'm still working that through with the school superintendent and the school committee. Should know that pretty soon. Well, I would entertain a motion. I think that Mr. Heim recommends uh, to work with them to develop a warrant article and we will eventually wrestle with do we do it the zoning board do it or redevelopment or whatever um, but I, I certainly understand the point about it does seem like we're losing a lot of trees here and if we are going to do something do something uh, soon although I don't I'm not 100% there yet myself but I don't know 
What's the rest so of Mr. Pirro? Yeah, oh, uh, refer so, to Mr. Heim. So, so moved. And uh, Mr. Heim actually said what I, what I, I was the point I was going to uh, make is that I mean, how many times have we come up upon town meeting? And we've had our hearings, and folks aren't even ready with the hearings. And, and the tr um, I just want to commend the tree committee for coming here four right, or five right. months before we even open the warrant to start this discussion. So I think that does give us time, and and we do have a process to try to work through. You know some of the the um, the balancing act that has to be achieved here. So, is there a second to Mr. Carroll's motion? Mr. Chairman, could I have clarification on what the motion actually is? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. The motion is to uh, direct Mr. Heim to work with the tree committee to bring back a uh, a more concrete proposal that um, we can then take under advisement to consider either for inclusion on the warrant at our request or for referral to the redevelopment board um, for potential inclusion uh, by them. Thank you. Does that encapsulate with where you were going, Mr. Chair? Yeah, I, I, although I do hope they take to heart that they include developers uh, in this discussion as well, have uh, uh, issues such as what would be the appeals, uh, penalties, et cetera. But let me first, is there a second yet? Second. Second, okay, now, Ms. Uh, Mahan. Just clarification. Um, not trying to stick uh, tie anybody down to a timetable I would be more comfortable with this process from all sorts of facets in terms of if we're working towards the regular spring town meeting versus a possible anticipated special town meeting end of September early October I, I, think, I, that's I think more it, I think that's more reasonable so, so what I would say is, is I'd like yes. clarification on because I know we talked yes. about it and I know there may be a possibility of a uh, special town meeting for special legislation for something else that um, is involved with the schools in terms of the, the, the scope of what it is, is that's being presented to us as well as asking our town council is the motion to direct town council to engage in these discussions with the end date of possibly presenting something December, January to get into the normal course of the annual town meeting versus a possible st special town meeting end of September or October. Didn't I say annual? <laughs> I know I didn't. Okay, but yes, that's what I'm it's saying. Annual. Is, yeah, does that sound reasonable? Do you know where I'm going with that? Uh, Mr. Chairman, may I? Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yeah, I, I, I mean, I can certainly, uh, the tree, I want to make, again, emphasize that the tree committee has done a tremendous amount of the legwork on this. Um, putting together a detailed proposal, it's a little bit difficult for me to say how extensive the actual motion would be. It's not the Warren article that's the problem. It's the motion. A Warren article, uh, just to be clear for everybody, I could put together for this board's consideration, but I think what I'm hearing from the board, and I think the tree committee is hearing as well, I'm assuming, is that, is that it's not the Warren article that, that, that concerns you. It's, it's what are we really going to have a, 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 in terms of a motion? Um, and if there's a lot of details that need to be sort of handed out with a little bit more um, consideration that maybe some of the average uh, Warren articles, then then that's fine. I would definitely, you know, obviously value the time. Uh, but I, but I, 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 in theory, can push anything to the to the to the front of the queue. It just depends on the selectmen's prerogative. Well. I kind of saw it as develop a Warren article, and then we'll figure out who's going to sponsor it. But that, but what I'm hearing now is you want to wait until the spring. Is that what I understand? But you want to wait for the spring. I had envisioned meeting. it as moving towards the annual, but um, yeah, be curious. Dunn. So towards the thing that towards what I said earlier, the, the thing that matters to me, for the, me supporting this in the end. Um, depends upon us getting a broad consensus that supports we're putting together the right bylaw. And that right bylaw is exactly as uh, Doug says, is the motion itself. Right. So putting it on, the, you know, whether or not we put something on the warrant is, you know, that's a, it's a trivial. The real question is what's in the motion and does that get broad support? And if we could assemble, if to me, if we could find a good consensus, a broad consensus in time for our September meeting, that, or our September, October potential, special that'd be great but that seems pretty fast and so i don't think we should and so towards joe's statement that we should be aiming for the spring it's not that we're waiting for the spring till we'll do it it's just that we are aiming to have our consensus and our vote in spring 
Is that consistent with what you? Everything is very, I'm just saying, develop it so we can look at it and decide whether yep. we like it. That's all I'm saying. All right. When it happens, okay. it's going to be when it happens. So let's not uh, say what warrant is going to appear in, whether it's a special or the annual in the spring. Let's just say go forth, develop it, fine. and then once we see what it is, we're, then okay, that's fine with me, Mr. Chairman. That's fine. I just want to make sure that we're not attaching it to that this is going in the special. Yeah, if it, if it can't be done, and if it can't be done in, in that time frame, it may not just be feasible for it to be done, mm -hmm. um, you know. But 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 I'll but I'll get right on it and work with these folks to put something together. That, that, that that's fine. I think keeping it open ended is 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 fine, especially given right. what we know is on council's plate right now. Right. I, I just asked the question, are we going to have a special? I didn't mean we have to get this in the special. I just wanted to understand what we have coming up. Yeah, Susan. Well, I just wanted to encourage the board to leave it open, as, as Ms. Mahan said, um, that it would be considered at a town meeting, whether it would be the fall town meeting, if there is one, or the spring town meeting. Um, I would, what I would hope wouldn't, you wouldn't do would be to specifically say it's for the spring town meeting because after all, that means you're going to miss the entire spring construction season and you're going to see a lot more trees go down before the bylaw passes and is approved by the attorney general whereas if it goes before a fall special town meeting if there is one then it gets passed it goes to the attorney general it comes back and by the time the uh the cranes and the bulldozers are out it's in place so um it, i think it's something we didn't think it was going to happen that quickly. I just myself found out it was possible that there'd be a fall special town meeting, but um, I, would, I would hope that the board wouldn't foreclose the opportunity of putting it on the special town meeting warrant if it seemed feasible. That's all. God, why did I ask that question? Just all, that's all we're talking about is a special. All I want is for you to get together with them and put something together more concrete for us to look at. That's all I want. So Sounds good. As long as that happens. Sounds like a plan. And if it happens to happen a month before a special and this board is happy with what it looks like, we sponsor it and we put it on the warrant. Right? Okay. I don't think we'll be there, but yeah. anyhow. All those in favor of the motion by Mr. Curo, seconded by Mrs. Mahan, please signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you all very much. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Good work on your part. You. Sorry I confused it. <coughs> okay. Uh, this will be a quick one, I can tell. Mr. Byrne. No, oh, jeez. <laughs> well, I, I actually hope that it will be. Um, and I really wish that I didn't have to keep coming back with uh, piecemeal changes because I really don't uh, don't like doing it that way. But I think uh, for the sake of the group and to allow us to move forward, it's really important to um, get, get the board support on this. Um, back when we initially approved the Nelson Nygaard study, we approved uh, the first 15 minutes of free parking, um, which I, I think everyone on the Parking Implementation and Governance Committee thinks is a good idea but it just can't be implemented um, right now. We, we've had uh, you know, long discussions on it, and it doesn't seem to be compatible with the technology that we're, um, I, I don't want to say committed to, but that we're, we're moving towards. And it, it seems like the enforcement will be quite difficult. Um, so we're asking that uh, the board kind of takes a step back from supporting that free 15 minutes and kind of lets us put into play um, you know, we, a, a system where you have to pay for the first 15 minutes, um, but let us study it moving forward because, uh, you know, as you know, this is a, a governance committee and we do intend to uh, meet and see what we can work out even after its implementation. And, um, and if there is any change we can make, we'll be happy to uh, consider it. But right now, for the sake of, uh, you know, moving forward in an efficient manner, I hope uh, that the board will reconsider its prior stance, um, and not because it's not a good stance, but because it's uh, not completely practical. Mm -hmm. So the, the motion is? Um, the motion would be to, um, rescind the yeah, to rescind the first, uh, our prior Publish. vote that is a free 15 minutes of parking, um, the free first three minutes parking at the on-street meters and um, to allow us to study it more moving forward. Okay, and seconded by you, Ms. Mann. Further discussion? 
All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Excuse me. Mr. Heim, uh, use is limitation for Buzzell Field. You guys are going to get tired of hearing from me. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, this is a fairly straightforward. Um, I think my memo speaks for itself. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. But uh, this is essentially a measure uh, to be voluntarily taken by the town to um, uh, do everything that we can to put uh, Mass DEP in a position to say, you guys have done what you need to do with respect to Buzzle Field. The field is safe uh, for use um, for all the purposes that it's being used for. This is essentially just saying, we're not going to disrupt the site. We're not going to allow certain uses that you'd never want to associate with Buzzle Field anyway to uh, have in place that sort of voluntary agreement about, about the field. Move approval. Second. Ms. Mohan. Just one question, sort of a hypothetical. I went through this, and I, I just can't apply it. Say in the future, um, for some reason, we need to do repairs or replacements or renovation for the lights that are down Buzzle Field, which does um, go beyond the two-foot surface grade that is referenced in the AUL, how would that apply to us? The short answer is that we can do that. We just have to go about it a very certain way. Yeah. I, and and, and if you, I, I, I'm not the right person to tell you all the details of exactly how we uh, you know, go through the process of assuring that you know, we address the site condition. It's just you, you, we would take certain precautionary and preventative measures to make sure that we're not disturbing the, um, the, the soft cat barrier in, 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 in a way that would be dangerous, things like that. We just wouldn't just go in there and do it in the same way that we might any ordinary field where we don't have any concerns about, um, the, about an AUL. And, and if I could ask maybe the town manager, because I anticipate in the next five years um, the lights on Buzzle Field possibly being an issue, um, do you feel comfortable I shouldn't say comfortable, but in, in ter outlined in the AUL that we have here before us, does that not make it cost prohibitive or site prohibitive that we can make those possible renovation? You know where I'm going with this, yeah, Mr. So, uh, Chaplain? Sorry. I, I, the way I would answer it is we, we, we go into this knowing that if we need to do any work, as you've described, we'll need to work with a licensed site professional that we w have worked with over the past, what, yeah, yeah, speak. eight years on all of the issues to make sure we remain within the AUL and take care of the, the issues as they, as they lay out. So I don't think it would be cost prohibitive. There would be uh, an incremental increased cost in making sure we were doing it right, uh, but I don't think it would be, it wouldn't be a, an absolute obstacle. Okay, so the terms of this AUL would not preclude, a, preclude us from doing any possible renovations or placements in the future? We just have to do them within the context of the AUL. But it's doable. Thank you. Other comments? So, uh, who moved? Sorry, Diane. I did. Uh, Mr. Dunn, sorry. <coughs> Seconded by Mr. Curo. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Um, anybody, and no one opposed, right? Uh, you got that, Mary? Yep. Thanks. Mm -hmm. So, item number 20 for discussion and approval, I. Um, the Board of Selectmen comments to Mass Housing regarding site approval application of Arlington Land Realty. And I understand that I, I don't, if you want to volunteer, how many of you have spoken to Doug or Mr. Witten about this at this point, and I know they've tried to include some of your comments, but who would like to start on this one? Mr. Mr. Byrne. Um, sure. I. Um so I, I guess uh, I did uh, speak to Doug briefly, but I, I just I want to say that, that the draft that came out today, I, I really liked. I, um, the one that the initial one we, we received, um, I, I think it hit the tone of the meeting, but I, I, I think that the tone that has been achieved in the second one might be a little bit more appropriate for the, for the letter that's being sent. Um, just thinking if I, if I was in mass housing shoes, that's I, I think how I would, I would probably take it. Um, and, and I really, I, I don't have any qualms with it. I, I think it's uh, extremely well written. I think it hits home all the points and, and does prove that, um, that, that this is not an appropriate project for this site. Um, the, the only issue I, I guess, or part I would want to bring up is and if, uh, Attorney Hyman, if you think it would be 
helpful even, um, where we do talk about all of the efforts we put into planning uh, around this land. I've, I was thinking that it might, um, I don't know if it would drive home the price, and I, I think that, or I mean drive home kind of all our efforts is if we did put some price tags next to the amount of money that the town has spent on these planning efforts, you know, through the master plan, through the open space plan, you know, we've invested very heavily in that, and I don't know if that would potentially, you know, show mass housing how serious we are about this planning process, because I think, um, you know, I, I, I hope that mass housing wouldn't discount um, the efforts we made without that. But of, of course, I think um, at our meeting on the 12th, the, it came, you know, it seemed to me that the developers certainly discounted the efforts that we've put in. I just don't want that to, um, you know, get lost in translation. So if um, I, I'd open it up to the board for, you know, their thoughts, but I, I think it could be a, a nice way to actually put a price tag to, um, you know, what we've done on to accomplish this over, you know, even the past few years. Is that possible, may I ask, is that? So anything's possible. I think it's a, a, a very valid uh, thing to note to Mass Housing that we've uh, put our money where our mouth is in terms of investing in the master plan and open space processes. With that said, uh, as the letter uh, notes, Mass Housing isn't a planning agency. Mm -hmm. um, they don't necessarily uh, care uh, whether or not we've spent money on the master plan or open space plan. And it's important, again, to note that the reason that, that, that 40B is not the reason we have a master plan or an open space plan. We've had master plan in, in, in place for many, many years. We've been working on this, and we've had open space plans for 20 years. Um, but those things are, um, I'm going to be a little bit uh, imprecise here, but they are defenses to 40Bs. Mm -hmm. And so they kind of come with the territory. In other words, they won't be surprised at the amount of money that we spent developing a master plan or an open space plan or the consultants that we work with to try to make sure that our master plan, you know, reflects all the different important issues that it needs to reflect, uh, the time and energy that we spent into in both town staff and uh, contracted staff. It, is, it isn't likely that um, they will see that as um, out of the ordinary in the sense that um, in order to have potential uh, defenses to a 40B before the Housing Appeals Committee, you have to have, well, you should have an adopted master plan. Same thing with the uh, open space plan, which is sort of a presumptive uh, defense to certain aspects of the 40B application. So it's not a problem for us to include it at all. Um, I don't know that it will change it dramatically. What type of figures did you have in mind? You, you know, what actually, not even, I came to the master plan, I thought of that actually after I saw the, um, the part about the open space plan because we did have a discussion and we approved it through CDBG was, you know, quite a bit of money for, for the product that came out. So I didn't know if that would, um, that would you know, benefit us at all. But I, I certainly understand that they're not a planning agency and that they just kind of, they expect communities to have that. and. Um, I appreciate your explanation there. Um, so um, that's I'm fine taking that off the table. And I thought it was. Um, I appreciate your insight on it. Um, I guess the only other question I would have on it is um, right before the conclusion, where we talk about um, what the applicant should be required, you know, should be required to do. Um, after we make this draft public, there is no way for the applicant to then look at this and then go and do that and show it to Mass Housing that they're, like prior to their ruling, Mass Housing, like Oak Tree and the Arlington Realty Trust um, or whatever they're choosing to call themselves today, um, they won't have a chance to respond to Mass Housing based off our, you know, response. So um, this is, so when we finalize this, it will be a public document, mm -hmm. we'll submit it to Mass Housing if, uh, Arlington Land Realty wants to take a look at it, they can take a look at it. They won't find any of the things that we're saying that we want to see um, uh, shocking to them. No, but can they take action um, between now and the time of the... the so their application is... Yeah, so I understand. I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Byrne. Uh, their application is their application. Mm -hmm. um, they can't cure the application uh, by saying, oh, we see all these things, here they are. I think what we would say is they submitted the application to us, we had a common period, it would be an endless cycle if then they could 
revise their application. I suppose they could always, you know, withdraw their application and reapply, but I, I don't think they're going to get some sort of rebuttal. <laughs> that, that's very helpful. Okay. Thank you very much. Can I ask my colleagues, if you don't mind, if I may ask, because that's the section I had a question on, if I could ask. So the first thing I'd like to ask is, what does, um, what does this word mean? Assuming arguendo, that Mass does not enforce its own regulations. What is arguendo? I'm sorry, I got a few questions on these, and I realized I forgot uh, to answer questions. Just by the way, so that folks know. Oh, I can't say that? No, 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 no. Uh, I'm sorry. Just by the way, so folks know, uh, because in case it wasn't clear, the way this process is followed is, the, is that Mr. Witten, our special counsel, and I drafted this letter, which is confidential, and submitted to the selectmen for their review. Um, any individual comments that the selectmen wanted to make to myself or Mr. Whitten were permitted, and we, with consult, uh, consulting with certain uh, town staff, like the planning director, made certain revisions to our, our draft and then resubmitted to the selectmen. When the selectmen, if assuming the selectmen find the letter satisfactory, they'll vote and approve it, and then the final version will be a public document, just so we're all clear on, on, on what's, what's going on here. Um, so the questions that uh, were submitted by the selectmen were submitted individually to me or Mr. Witten on an attorney-client uh, communications. Uh, assuming arguendo is just legal speak for, for argument's sake. So the, you know, basically saying, for argument's sake, assuming that the uh, mass housing uh, ignores X, Y, Z, this is our complaint, or this is what we think would happen, or this would be the issue. And uh, it's, I did get a question about what uh, the instant application is. That is a term of art that's frequently used in these types of uh, legal documents. Um, they would know what that means too. So here's my question that um, I think you and Mr. Whitten have done a superb job building the argument. Why don't we drop that entire last section until Mass Housing indeed does issue the letter and then submit this to Mass Housing. Because this is our one shot, Mr. Chairman. We really get one shot to make a comment. And I, I understand exactly what you're saying, which is why afford uh, the out to Mass Housing right. to say, we entirely oppose this project. We think it's terrible for Arlington. But if you're going to grant it, we're wrong. then this is what we want to see in it. The reason we want that is because there's a consequence to putting that in there, too. Uh, uh, if Mass Housing uh, grants site approval, we want them to grant site approval with conditions because they can. They have three options. They can grant site approval, which we don't want at all. They can deny site approval, which is exactly what at least I've been hearing the board wants. Right. Or they can grant with conditions, which is not what we want, but is better than granting without conditions. And so what we'd be saying is, look, if you're going to grant this thing, which we're entirely opposed to, these are the conditions that you need to be telling them. You've got to address this with the ZBA. Right. Now, in theory, the ZBA could still say, hey, we want you guys to address these things. But if mass housing requires them to do it, then their site approval is contingent on that, and they must do it, even if the ZBA fails to bring right. these things up. OK, thank you. Who's up, Mr. Dunn? I think the pros is uh, the word is muscular. I think it throws a few punches, and I think it's entirely appropriate, and I'm very happy to support it. The pros is muscular. I think that's the right word. <laughs> nice. That, I like it. I like that, too. Mr. Kuro. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Not tough. This was an, uh, yeah. it was an excellent 15 pages of, uh, of, of um, reading. I also was in contact with uh, Mr. Heim. I appreciate you incorporating some of my comments about beefing up some of the actions that this board has taken around traffic in that neighborhood um, and, and some tone issues. Um, I also had raised the issue around the open space plan, too, and, and making sure that it's... Um, illustrated there that, that our open space plan was not part of just the recent master planning process, but to kind of reiterate some of the things that Ms. LaRoyer um, said at our special meeting last week, that this is a plan which over the last, I guess, 20 years, every several years, was every five years, I think, it's revised and comes back and has consistently flagged um, the Mugar property, and I wanted to make sure that that was emphasized in the letter. Um, as well. But I, I think it's an excellent letter. I'm very happy to support it. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, if I may. Mr. Kuro, uh, if you like, what I, what I can do to address that concern, I don't think I understood originally, uh, 
I can drop, we, we can insert a footnote in that, in that space and say, you know, we note that the master plan and open space plan were developed well before an any application for site approval was submitted. And in fact, the open space plan, the master plan has been in works for five years and the open space plans we've had for 20 plus years. Yeah, maybe making clear that it's it's been renewed Three days, every, yeah. what is it, every five years? I'm asking mm -hmm. my colleagues here. Mm -hmm. And then it's, I, I believe it's true that it's consistently flagged the Bugar property. I'll ask my colleagues who've been here for previous yes. open space plans. I believe it has. I, I can't. <clears throat> yeah, that's a good but idea. I believe it has been, yeah. yeah. Just to just to make clear that this isn't a uh, kind of a Johnny come lately. We're we're whipping this together now just just to uh, respond to this proposal. Thank you, Mr. Mahan. Um, there's two areas. The first one, which is twofold, um, I'm comfortable with, but just want to if there's any way we can kind of beef it up a little bit more in terms of looking at the few times that mass housing in the past has uh, denied project eligibility letters. Mm -hmm. As long as um, attorneys Heim and Wooden and the town manager are comfortable with um, that we've highlighted enough, the um, Route 2, Route 16 flooding, where this is a transit-oriented um, development where they're saying only one-third vis-a-vis 80 cars, one-third of the occupants of the building will actually be in cars, the rest will be transit-oriented. Um, I just want to make sure that you all feel comfortable that it's uh, represented in the, in our letter to Mass Housing regarding the current and existing Route 16 and Route 2 flooding and the developer Oak Tree's um, consistent statement as recently as our meeting last week that when we were asked where would the flood mitigation, where would, the, where would you be direct, directing the flood water, and they indicated Route 2, which in concert also means Route 16, which also has been closed down in the spring and the fall pretty much consistently every year, uh, as well as their um, sort of uh, presenting this with the caveat that the, the big uh, carrot is this is a transit-oriented uh, affordable housing development that we're building, but you're basically building it on a site that you're creating more uh, situations where you're not going to allow these transit-oriented people to even get over Route 2 to the Al Life. So I, I just would put that before you all. I'm not suggesting any language. I just want to make sure, looking at previous um, project eligibility denials, as well as, um, and maybe I missed it, but where there was sort of back and forth, but again, um, Gwen Noyes from Oak Tree said at the meeting uh, last week, our legislative delegation had the opinion that there were no discussions and uh, the Oak Tree did say at the meeting at Hardy in May and reiterated the other night at the meeting that um, the Board of Selectmen through the chairman had, but there have been discussions with Mass DOT uh, regarding uh, access off of the Route 2 off-ramp uh, at the Cambridge meeting back in April, May. I can't remember when it was. It was over by Acorn Park. Um, if, if Attorney Heim wouldn't and uh, the town manager uh, feel that that should be cited again, that, that when that was discussed at that meeting in Cambridge, um, that Mass DOT was there, although there were other discussions referenced, that uh, the individuals from Mass DOT indicated that it was the lowest level of service, uh, the, the grade angle coming off that off-ramp. So I, I would leave that to you all. I, I'm just looking at what I got from, um, and I'm blanking on her name, it was the intern, one of the interns that came out on the site visit. Uh, in terms of the few times in the past when they have denied a project eligibility letter, which is really our only bite at the apple here. You know, if, if we can't get the project eligibility letter, as we all know, denied, then it does go to ZBA and ARB and everybody else, and we sort our titular heads and oversee it. So I'm not asking that anything be added, or but I just would put it before you all. And if you feel that um, that's something that should be amplified upon, um, I, you know, I definitely appreciate that. So, I mean, I don't want to put my, you all know, you're the attorneys, you're the town manager. Um, and then my last uh, comment would be, um, I would anticipate that after this um, letter does go out, um, speaking with the chairman and the town manager about what immediate steps, because we have a very limited window of opportunity of where we can perhaps directly affect 
um, this initial process. I, I do have some feelings about, uh, similar to what we did with DCR, um, definitely uh, meeting with MassDOT and or speaking with the chairman and, and the town manager about one or two other things that we possibly could do in the short term, um, the chairman and myself and or the board. Can we go behind, be, before Mass Housing and testify? I, I don't believe they'll afford the board that opportunity. No, I mean, we probably How could about have me? Six Tell weeks. the board. How about probably me? Six, no. no, probably six <laughs> weeks. No, what, what I'm thinking is, where am I going with this? I'm thinking sort of a <coughs> larger picture involving Mass DOT as well as involving uh, uh, people on the federal side. Uh, Congresswoman Clark um, has been involved in this and we've had conversations and I've had some tertiary conversations with um, Senator Markey and uh, Warren, but basically we're starting with Congresswoman Clark. So what, what I would say is um, I'll definitely um, speak with the chairman and the, and the town manager and then leave it to the chairman to communicate to the rest of the board what steps we take in the future as a board or if we can get a meeting with Mass DOT and or something on the federal side. You know where I'm going with that, Adam? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. More than glad to. Okay. But <clears throat> I think you'd do a better job of trying to get us a meeting, but that's certainly something more than glad to talk about. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Can I, um, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, may I? Yeah. Uh, Ms. Mahan, I, I, one of the things that will be important is that um, any notes that we're going to take to change the letter, Mr. Whitten and I want to try to process and make changes to immediately. And so we'll probably only get tonight, but well, we will only get tonight to, ha to, to make any revisions that the board feels are necessary. Um, so I want to make sure I understand that I can sort of synthesize uh, what you want to be emphasized more. And it's that um, not only are adjacent properties subject to flooding, but Route 2 and Route 16 themselves are uh, prone to flooding, which certainly impacts the credibility of any assertion that any traffic congestion issues could be resolved uh, through Route 2 or Route 16 access. Is that sort of, this, is, am, I, am I hitting that target? Is that what you're saying, or is it a little, it's maybe a little bit more comprehensive than that? I'm saying where they're, they're posing this as a strong point, that this is a transit-oriented affordable housing or working class, only one-third of the people will actually have cars, where this is a transit-oriented development that they're proposing, but where they have stated repeatedly at the meeting in May, as well as the one we had last week, that they would be uh, using for flood mitigation to send um, the, uh, when they were asked about their flooding mitigation plan, where would those waters go, they directly cited um, Route 2. Uh, and to me, that would be that sort of does not comport, that does not, um, not a line. It, it sort of goes against to this is a transit oriented, you know, you're encouraging people to come here. You, you're really not using cars, you're on bicycles, you're going to take advantage of Route 2, you're going to take advantage of L Wife. But what they're saying for their flood mitigation is we're going to send our excess flooding over to Route 2, which consistently already floods and has to be shut down, Route 2 and Route 16. And it sort of defies what they're saying in terms of their project. My thing is if you're building a project, you want to be responsible. And if you're saying your target audience is, you know, people that aren't going to be really in cars, they're going to be transit oriented. Well, you're already indicating that you're going to start flooding the site even more, whether they want to get on bicycles as transit oriented, whether they want to walk over to Alwife. So you'll be closing Route 2 16 down more, which is already a demonstrated um, effect. I think incorporating I'm language. Yeah, I'm trying to think of the court reporter okay. or not. Yeah. And, and then it. the second would be that, um, you know, that they're, they're also looking for relief, the um, Route 2. Um, access off the off ramp in East Arlington, and at a uh, meeting uh, that Mass DOT had in Cambridge, um, I believe it was Acorn Park, that um, it was indicated that that was the lowest level of service and safety, the grade angle that they had proposed. Mm -hmm. So again, saying you know this is they're talking about you know how we're going to get people in and out, we're not going to affect the neighborhood. Well, one of the big things you're hanging your hat on is this access off the Route 2 off ramp that you're willing to pay whatever they said, $50,000. But it, it, it's already been demonstrated that that's a very dangerous grade angle. Got I'm it. Saying, I'm, no, I'm exhausted. I'm no, sorry. I understand. I got okay. it. I understand. Thank you. And, whatever, it, and I would leave it to you, Attorney Heim, Attorney Whitten, how much importance that really is. But just looking at previous denials. That's Thank okay. you. I, I got but it. But if you think it's already in there and it's fine, and Attorney Whitten, I'm not going to. 
go crazy about it. Okay. Thank you. Could somebody make a motion to have me sign this thing? So moved. So moved. Oh, second, Mr. Burns motion. Further discussion? Uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Yeah, yeah. It's due when again, Mr. Hyman? Tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow. So, uh, so Mr. you need Whitten to stop I, by or something? Yeah, Mr. Whitten and I will revise it um, yeah. and we'll have it ready for your signature as soon as possible. Yeah. Uh, sincerely, I think that meeting the other night uh, uh, went particularly well. I mean, again, Arlington Land Realty didn't have to be there, and they were, and we certainly have to uh, give them credit for that. But it was pretty clear. What, 200 people? Was, was that the count of the crowd? Over two, yeah. Like more, two, than, more than 200. Less than three, over two. Um, but I think the work that Mr. Heim and Mr. Whitten have been able to get done since that meeting and get input from five different uh, thinkers up here has been exceptional. Uh, so thank you very much for that. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. I mean, if there is any hope, I don't know how you could have said it with more muscle. Mm -hmm. Goal setting, <laughs> Mr. Oh. Chapter Lane. <laughs> I'm not asking for another Saturday yet. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. Mm. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So uh, this is in follow-up to the goal setting session we had back in June. Uh, what we've done in the past is I've provided the board with both a red line version of the changes or updates that were made, as well as a clean copy uh, with those updates the same, whichever is easier for you to read. If you have any feedback or, or changes to make tonight, uh, I will make those changes and bring them back at the first meeting in September for the board's further consideration and adoption. If there are no changes tonight, uh, we can uh, I'd, I'd ask the board to consider adopting them. Uh, so uh, I, I leave it to the board for feedback, questions, any further discussion they might have. Board members, anybody? Move adoption. Move adoption. Second. Second. One, one quick question. Um, do we still have, and I think it's at the very end of uh, the goals and missions, are we still outstanding with, in, in negotiations with one union? Right. So that's still ongoing. That ongoing. hasn't come to. Okay, thank you. Correct. Mr. Dunn. Uh, I just wanted to say, just because it may not be obvious to some of the, uh, to anyone who's reading the minutes or watching, is that uh, we spend a lot of time on this <laughs> and we actually so we all get together on a saturday morning and we spend uh three ish four hours i forget what it is and uh we sit down and we hash out a whole bunch of things that we think are really important about the town and we revisit it annually and it's i think i find this documentary <coughs> immensely useful and periodically reorienting when i ask myself why am i working on this or what is this or and this helps me re remind the decisions we made and i I like the process and I like the output. Could I just come into that, Joe? Because I hate these things. <laughs> I miss golf. And every time I've done them, I'm like, you know, that was very worthwhile. And thank you for dragging me in there with my feet kicking the whole time. <laughs> with your but spikes it, on. <laughs> <laughs> but it is important. And the first thing we do is our goals and then uh, how the manager stacks up against them. The only thing I would say about this is I can't see the color red, so I can't see all the changes, but I know there are hundreds of changes that you've made there, which is uh, very impressive. Mr. Kiro, sorry. Th thank you very much, and I concur with you. I, th I think that organizationally as a board, I think that these sessions um, have been some of the most valuable you know, since I've been on, on the board. Um, at the risk of, of of uh, jumping the gun on the new business though, it just did just occur to me that I think, Mr. Chaplin, you had a piece of new business that you were going to bring forward that might appropriately translate into an organizational goal and I just wanted to open that up for you. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. I, I, I'll talk more about the departure of the deputy town manager under new business, but I think what you're suggesting is under organizational for town manager, I can add uh, recruit screen and hire uh, a new deputy town manager to replace Andrew Flanagan or something along those lines. Yes. A new I was going to bring that up up front. But he a new Andrew. Right new Andrew. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The oh, same. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I think the, if the board's my colleagues so, are okay so. with, with that. Of as course. Well. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. You're going to talk about the process. You're going yes. To, yeah, implement, Brian. Set. Set. Everybody good? Yep. On the motion by Mr. Dunn to adopt. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Thank you very much. 
Thank you very much for that work. Correspondence. Move receipt. Uh, yeah, I have one comment on one of the on issues. which one? Yep. Um, Westminster um, safety improvements. Yep. Um, as you'll see, um, Corey's studying here, and I did um, receive an email from the resident on Westminster, and um, I do agree. Um, if we could send it to Corey um, and Tech, and uh, it looks like it, it might be time for a new study up there because the last one was in 2007, yep. and Corey did uh, recommend that. Um, as well, so um, if we Refer could just send Jack. it over to them, that would be uh, that would be great. All right. So on on the motion by Mr. Byrne, is there a second? Second. second. Refer to TAC. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you. And then, I. Oh, sorry, Ms. Byrne. No, were you going to speak to one? I don't want to. Yeah, I wanted to speak to the Victoria yes. Road yeah. traffic yeah. concerns, yeah. and I'd like to recommend that. I just don't feel TAC has to do a huge study on this. Could I ask my colleagues if they would, before the next meeting, drive through this area and um, come back and ready to yes or no put a stop sign up there? So. Do we have to worry about um, the what is MU, MUTCD regulations mm -hmm. that um, Corey kind of sets the guidelines for to put up stop signs? To yeah, refer it to Corey. Yes. Yeah, okay. instead of TAC. This is okay. something. Yeah, I just don't, I, you know, I just don't see this needs a whole study by no, TAC, but, but Corey is fine with me, Dan. I, I, I totally think that's a great way to do it because I suspect that this is one of those things where enforcement may be more, effect, like, uh, more effective than any of the change on a sign that we can do. Okay. So on the motion by Mr. Byrne to refer it to uh, Corey, seconded by Mr. Dunn. Thank you. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And uh, move receipt on the other two or anything else? Yeah, so moved. So moved, Mr. Dunn? Yeah, I'll just speak to it rather than under new business. Uh, that uh, in the end of the beginning of August, Adam and I went out to Sudbury and we did attend that meeting that's referred to in there. And then, um, and it was interesting. I don't, wouldn't describe it as, you know, particularly productive, but it certainly wasn't unproductive. It just didn't, you know, make a lot of forward progress. But I think the conversation in and of itself was good. Uh, and then, of course, what happened subsequent to that is that the state the, um, school, Mass B, the uh, school building, uh, approved them to move forward on the next module with the, with the building that's proposed. And I think that the thing that came out of the most the last month that is the most interesting is that the uh, the Mass Bead deliberately released an internal memo where they said that they will not support a vocational project with fewer than 600 students, yeah. and that was a big thing for them to say, and it actually it explains more why Minuteman has chosen this number of 628, which we all think is too big. Uh, because they were being told privately the 600 number, I'm pretty sure, but now it's public and now we can see it too. And what that does is it just opens up this very, I think it really clears away a lot of the uh, unknowns because it means that we can have a very more serious conversation about the fact that this region only sends 400 and something students, like it's low, like, you know, 400 students. And the state is saying you have to build for 600, so who's going to pay for the difference? And that is a very clear and concrete conversation to have. And uh, I know that um, Adam has asked uh, his, his kind of working group to meet. And uh, so we'll, I'll be back here at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning um, to talk about whatever is, uh, to see what we, makes sense. Because obviously with the, especially if we do happen to have a town meeting, we'll have to vote on the Wayland thing and what's going to be our strategy to, on all that. So um, that was a lot of words, but now I have nothing for new business. So congratulations. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. James Dunn. likes that. He's going <laughs> Sorry. So who has the motion to receive for the rest of them? So moved. And seconded by Mr. Dunn? Sure. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 New business, <coughs> Marianne Sullivan. Uh, no new business. Wait, what? Our next selectman's meeting is? Oh, September. And what's between now and the next selectman's meeting? Like I said, no new business. No new business. Town day. <laughs> Town day's coming fast and furious. Uh, we have a new system that Adam Krawski uh, helped us uh, implement this year. Uh, it's turning out, I think, really great for, for our office. Hopefully, uh, the participants 
will like it as much, and we'll find out within this week. Uh, but yeah, it's going. And um, so September 12th, everybody be here at about what time? 9.15, 9.30? Or would you like the five o'clock shift? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Hine. No new business. Mr. Chapdelaine. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman. I have a, a few items. Uh, as uh, Mr. Kiro alluded to, and as the board knows and was covered in uh, local media, Deputy Town Manager Andrew Flanagan has been offered the position of Town Manager in Andover. So where I can say for myself, I'm very happy and, and, and proud of him uh, achieving his goal of becoming a Town Manager, but equally sad to see him leave Arlington. I think he's really grown into the position over the past three plus years and really done some great work here in Arlington. So we'll be very sad to see him leave, and he's leaving with big shoes to fill, even after just uh, three plus years. Uh, so I'll definitely have him come before the board at the board's next meeting in September for a more formal goodbye, uh, and we'll also plan some form of a, a reception or coffee to uh, allow both board members, uh, employees, and even folks from town to be able to come by and uh, you know wish wish him well in his next uh, his next endeavor. Um, so to the next question of of trying to find his replacement. Uh, we, uh, to, somewhat to Andrew's chagrin, he, he couldn't believe how fast we were moving. Uh, we, we, uh, we posted the job today. It's already available <laughs> on the MMA site. I so said, sad you're going. Okay. I said, no offense, no offense, Andrew, but you're yesterday's news. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta move. Um, we'll be putting together a panel, uh, that Karen Malloy will certainly be on. Uh, we'll bring, uh, one member of the finance team, uh, whether it be the comptroller or, the, or someone from the treasurer's office. Uh, someone from the school department, most likely Diane Johnson, but we're still going to work to iron that out, and probably one department head representative. And what we'll do is we'll do a resume screen, uh, we'll do a first round interview with an assessment portion, and then a second round interview with an assessment portion, and I'll probably be part of that second interview uh, as I was when we hired Andrew um, a couple of years back. So we are going to have the posting open until September 16th, and then begin screening following that. Uh, so that, that's just sort of the rough um, the rough approach. I'll continue to provide more information to the board as it moves forward. Uh, I'll also provide more information to the board about what the interim plan is uh, once Andrew goes. Andrew will probably, we haven't solidified a date yet, probably be here towards the end of September, wants to take uh, a week or so before he starts in Andover. I think he's going to try to start in Andover on October 1st. Uh, so we'll have a little bit of time to plan uh, some interim measures before he goes. He'll be able to get some things uh, in place, especially for the capital budget before he goes, which will be exceptionally helpful. Um, but aside from that, I, I feel pretty comfortable about um, the process uh, that we've, uh, you know, put together the bones of here. And um, yeah, we'll miss him. We'll miss him. Can I just ask, as I know we discussed this, and now I just wasn't paying attention as I could. Um, <clears throat> how many people currently on the committee that you cited with Ms. Malloy, someone from Treasurer, someone from school? Well, probably be four people. Four people. Okay, I, I would just put a plug in, just because I'm going to put a plug in if um, you want to round it out to an odd number, if there was uh, some sort of um, union representation, or yes, it is the deputy town the manager. Up. But I'm, I, I just would put it out as a suggestion. We have, it's, it's your appointment. and Yeah, you know, I think the odd but, number is. But I just odd. wanted to. Just put that out there. Thank you. That's fair. I mean, it's your appointment, so I'm not framing it. It just where's the deputy town manager versus. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. You know, Andrew first applied for this six months ago, so it's yeah. not surprising that the day after he he's offered the job, you were ready to go. <laughs> we knew months ago that That's he was, was yeah. going to get this job. Um, the um, the chairman of the Andover Board of Selectmen came here to Arlington to interview Andrew and meet people that he works with and stuff. Coincidentally, I was here that day, and she came to this office looking for Andrew. So it was perfect that I had a chance to tell her, you can't have him, uh, by way of telling her. You were very persuasive, Mr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they were very effective. <laughs> by way of telling her, yeah, yeah, yeah. How lucky she would be to get him, but anyhow. Uh, so a, a couple other quick pieces of business. Uh, after, um, uh, a pretty l long process. Today we did uh, hire a facilities director for the newly created facilities department. Uh, we uh, made an offer and she accepted to the current regional energy manager, Ruthie Bennett, to be uh, the facilities director. Uh, so um, I, I'm very excited about her. She brings a, a ton of energy, passion, sort of innovation to the position. 
Uh, so she will um, we'll work on a transition from her out of her regional position, work with Bedford into the new position. But uh, that was sort of breaking news today that I wanted to let the let the board know about. Uh, Saturday, uh, we had uh, the solar event at the Dallin School, which was a, a success, uh, just sort of a, a, a ribbon cutting or, or a photo opportunity of sorts. They got me to wear a hard hat and they had an actual full-size crane. It was pretty impressive bringing up uh, the big parcels to the, uh, to the roof. So that was happening at the Stratton at the Dallin at the same time, but that was a, a success and look forward to hopefully by the end of September having those uh, panels actually generating electricity once they're all assembled and, uh, and operational. Um, Mr. Burney, are you going to talk about fire training? Um, yeah, I will, but you, you are more than welcome to. Well, I'll, I'll just mention that I had a great time training with the fire department last week with Mr. Byrne, but I'll, I'll let him get into some of the details. Uh, and then the last uh, piece is, the board may have already heard, but if not, I wanted to make them aware, uh, with continuing school enrollment uh, bulging and projections continuing to push in that direction. Uh, the school superintendent is recommending that the school committee officially start to consider as a future option utilizing the Gibbs School uh, for Arlington students again. Uh, so that um, has cost ramifications and also has significant impacts on the current tenants of the Gibbs School. So no decisions have been made and I don't think they'll be made for the course of the next year, but uh, there will there, there'll be a conversation, I think, angst uh, amongst the tenants. So I wanted the board to be aware of that uh, as those conversations start to unfold. Uh, and that's what I have for new business tonight. Thank you. Um, okay. So, yeah, following up on um, Adam's uh, comment about firefighter training. Well, we last week, um, Adam and myself, along with uh, Chief Jefferson and uh, one of the shifts that were on, went down and did some training on a house on Dorothy Road. Um, and it, it's a really good program, and I, I will say, anyone who is, you know, tearing down their house, um, please consider donating it to the fire department, because this really is invaluable training that they get. Um, they brought, they, you know, put us in full gear. I will say it was on a very humid day, so I was sweating before I even took one step in it. Um, but they filled the house up with smoke, and we uh, crawled around, um, you know, going through exactly um, the process that the firefighters use. Um, tried and found a um, found the body in the smoke-filled house, and you know they talked about how they'd get him out. And um, the second part of the training was carrying the hose up to the second floor, and we got the fire the hose. And after the first time I fired the hose, I nearly fell backwards. Uh, thank God someone was there behind me to keep me uh, standing up. And then uh, we got to uh, tear down some roofs and uh, put some access through walls. So all in all, it was a pretty fun day. Um, I walked away, obviously, uh, I already had, but even a further uh, deep respect of the work they do. I mean, what they have to be prepared for. But uh, another thing that really blew me away was kind of the science behind it and how well they all know it. Um, it, it it's really, really enlightening to, uh, to hear them go into detail about um, how fire travels and, um, and how to stop it. And uh, they really are a, a true uh, team of professionals. And uh, it was a, a great day, um, great day. And I'm very thankful to the chief for extending the invitation. Um, you have one other piece of new business. Um, as some of you may have seen in the advocate lately, there are some ads uh, saying that I am uh, potentially trying to harm Arlington's taxi business. Um, it, it's stemming from the Parking Implementation and Governance Committee, and I want to uh, just make it very clear, we are trying our hardest to work with the taxis to come up with a resolution that is in the best interest of everyone who uses the center. And uh, we've asked them to become part of the conversation and we hope, uh, hope moving forward they will do so. So thank you very much. I haven't even seen those. I'm, I'm gonna go look and uh, <laughs> I saw all the rest of the hand. I, I haven't afforded myself the opportunity to speak to the town manager at this time, so I'm going to say no new business right now and get you all up in September. I have some new business stuff, but I want to run it past the town manager first, and I, I've, been, I've been stuck. I couldn't get to the phone, so no new business. Okay. So I'm, I'm just giving Adam a warning. And you really are done, Mr. Dunn? I'll just say, people ask me, they say, Dan, how's the selectman thing going? And I say, M&M, &M, Minuteman and Mugar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Mr. Carroll. No, no, please. Uh, just one, uh, the uh, Charlie Foskman, your appointees mm. for the uh, Community Preservation Act Committee have held um, an initial uh, meeting where they have um, 19 applicants, Adam? That is right, yes. And just to, to uh, agree on process, and they've developed a, uh, a rating system. Uh, they're going to uh, meet uh, this Wednesday, I think it is. Correct. And their goal is to hand Adam and I six to eight candidates, uh, which Adam and I will then interview and then bring to this board the four candidates we recommend. Every name on that list is qualified to serve on this committee. It's the, we're, we're also uh, trying to find out of the other, you know, redevelopment board, uh, housing, the other five uh, boards and commissions that appoint someone where they are at this point. So we can do some balancing if we can with geography in the town and specific interests and et cetera. But, so our goal is about the middle of September, we hope for he and I to bring you the four, I guess by the September 21st meeting. Huh? That would be the goal. Yeah. Correct. Has the AG signed off on that? I no. Yeah. no. Right, so. Move to adjourn. Uh, move to adjourn, is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. The next meeting of the Board of Selectmen is September 21st.